Yo, what's up guys hope you guys are doing good. So today we are going to see what if Naruto ran away at young age and encountered Team 7 at Land of Waves Part 1. Hope you will enjoy this video so before we start please like the video and subscribe to our channel and hit bell notification it motivates me to upload more fanfics for my lovely audience. So let's get started. A small whiskered blonde haired boy runs for his life. This isn't anything new for him for five years he's been tormented by this village and for what he doesn't even know, the young boy Naruto Uzumaki has been glared at spat at beaten with an inch of his life on multiple occasions, he's been stabbed, poisoned, burned you name it the village have done it to him luckily enough he's not been sexually abused by them. Most times it's just glares and name calling the worst cases are when villagers are drunk, or on his own birthday a day that should be a happy moment for him is utter hell. He has no idea why the villagers do this to him they call him demon spawn, Kyubi reincarnate whatever that means, they call him a murderer and that confuses him as he's never hurt anyone his whole life. Whenever he tells them this the beatings get worse. It's not only the villagers he's seen ninjas attack him also. How he's still alive he doesn't know. Of course one day every year the year of a festival of the defeat of the Kyubi or the worst it sucks for him because the festival falls on his birthday and that day is utter hell for him always running, hiding doing whatever he can to avoid a beating not that he ever gets away from a beating they always find him somehow. When he's taken to the doctors you'd think they would help him but you'd be wrong again their job is to help people but they don't see him as a person they're just like the villagers they could be the cruelest of them all intentionally poisoning him to test out the effects and never giving him the antidotes he always seems to fight the poison somehow not that he knows how. To them he's just a guinea pig and a demon, it's another reason he hates going to the hospital. He always heals it confuses him because he knows there's very few people that are actually nice to him. There's three Anbu he knows of that seem to care about him one has long purple hair and is called Nako he knows she's a female the other one called Inu well he's a male but doesn't really talk to him. Then there's Weasel that was always very secretive. The Ichirakus care for him and they allow him to eat at their shop for free as he has no money. The only downside is that they were never busy by associating with the so-called demon not that they seem to care. The last person is the Hokage he's a kind old man Naruto's only met him a few times and he calls him Gigi and the Hokage doesn't seem to mind always laughs actually. But he doesn't see him that much as he's far too busy. Speaking of his birthday it was a few days ago and every year the beatings get worse the first two years were okay maybe they wanted to wait until he could walk or run before they chased him like some sick game of cat and mouse. This brings us to the here and now another day of hunting it's still the festival a week long festival means a week of constant beatings and running away. He's getting faster though all the running and being so small really helps him from getting away not that it ever gets him anywhere. As well as his speed his stealth skills have picked up as he's running he sees the gates. He stops and looks back and hears a crowd of people searching for him he just sighs and starts running again not even to stop running when he passes through the gate he just keeps running as far as his little legs will carry him. He's been running for a few hours now he has amazing stamina which helps him run for great distances. He looks down and sees his attire a ripped white t-shirt with several holes in them his shorts not much better. He looks down at his feet he doesn't even own any sandals so his feet are covered with blood. Also he has no money or weapons, what exactly is he going to do? He looks back the way he came then looks all around he has no idea where he is, should he turn back and go home but why, why go home to more beatings they hate him so why return there? He sits down against a tree and just sits there, sorry Gigi, Nako, Inu, Weasel Ichirakus but I'm not coming back ever, I hate it there and I'm never coming back I'll miss you all though. Fanfiction. Net. Just in. Community. Forum. B. More. Return of the Uzumaki by Jaegermeister31. Anime, Naruto rated. M. English, Romance and Adventure. Naruto U. Sakura H. Ino Y. Ryazetsu, Words. 24k plus, faves. 521, follows, 646, published, November 16, 2017 updated, 
November 25, 2022. 92 Chapter 2, Menma Yukita. Return of the Uzumaki Part 2 Menma Yukita. A.N. Hey everyone time for Chapter 2. I got mixed reviews about Chapter 1 Yes it will be Narusaku that is not negotiable if you don't like the pairing simple don't read it. And yes it will remain Narusaku that is all. There are plenty of surprises, and OCs in this story. Naruto will be strong in this story and a new idea from a friend has given me a new idea to make Naruto stronger. To Uzumaki I agree Naruhina wouldn't work. Yes Naruto doesn't trust or like Konoha the reason he returns will be made known in a few chapters time. In this chapter and for a few others the people Naruto meets will know him as Menma but I will still call him Naruto normally. Kayubi talking, Jutsus. Naruto talking to Kayubi, Sakura talking to inner self. Inner thoughts. Inner Sakura. Disclaimer. I don't own Naruto just this story. It's been a few days since Naruto left Konoha, the village he was born in, the village that terrorized him for five years, the village that he'd rather never see again, but something in the back of his mind is telling him they will come for him and force him back, he won't go willingly that's for sure but he'll just have to get stronger. He stayed in villages and although he didn't want to do it he stole food, and clothes to survive, how he got away with it was also unusual, after getting as far away as possible from the places he stole from he arrives in another village, his little legs aching in pain from running a long way. The village he is in now seems to be having some type of festival, at first he's nervous remembering the festival he usually witnessed which was the damn Kayubi festival, and conceitedly being his birthday how karma was such a bitch to him he doesn't know. This village festival seems to be different he overhears people talking about a harvest and how well they did, he asked if he could help, he expected to be swore at or chased away but the women just smiled at him and gave him jobs to do. For the next week he helped with preparing for the festival, he was also given a place to stay and food, so for him it was great, he'd even been promised money so a win, win for him. He stayed during the festival, and helped out he got to play with the other kids also so that was a new experience he could get used to this, but he still wanted to become a ninja, although he wasn't sure how he could seeing as he's not in Konoha anymore. With the money he was given he was able to buy some food, the women who surprisingly let him stay with them during the preparation for the festival even surprised him by making him some clothes seeing as his were kind of in need of repair, she made him some trousers, a t-shirt and some underwear and lastly some sandals. With his money he bought more clothes and a knife as he knew he would have to move on soon. He wanted to experience the life of a fisherman, as one of the boys he played with told him what they did and to Naruto it seemed cool. He heard about a boat heading to Wave Country, he was able to get a job on the boat doing odd jobs he again would be paid and supplied with food and a place to sleep so it was all good. The day the boat arrived Naruto had to sneak on board and keep his head down the reason was not because he was a stowaway or anything but because of some Anbu from Konoha and they were looking for him, surprisingly nobody gave him up. He was able to get away from the village and was now out on the ocean with the fishermen, it was fun seeing the cool looking fish and other strange monsters in the ocean, he put on some muscle also it was one of the reasons he decided to stay on the boat instead of disembarking at wave country. He was told they would be returning to wave country within the month and that was fine hopefully if the Anbu went to wave country they would have moved on before he returned. One major thing Naruto did was change his name to Menma Yukita, he's not really sure how he thought of the name but he liked it so the fishermen all called him Menma as did the villagers in the last village he stayed at. When they returned to wave country a month later they paid him and they went their separate ways, Wave Country was a fishing village so he could still go fishing if he wanted which he enjoyed, like the last village and on the fishing boat he did odd jobs, it was how he met Tazuna a drunk old man who was also a builder. Tazuna was a builder a quite well known one in the Wave Country and he always did a great job when he wasn't drunk which unfortunately was most of the time, Naruto met Tazuna's daughter her name was Tsunami, she was a pretty woman, who always seemed to smile, and the three of them became close friends. Naruto never, told them where he was from, they gathered early on it wasn't a good idea as it seemed to depress their new friend. 
he lived with them in their guest room, it was because Tsunami wouldn't let Naruto live on the streets, he stayed there for a few months while Tazuna built Naruto's log cabin deep within the woods. Naruto wanted to live alone especially after the damn Anbu were seen again although it would mean he would have to always be on guard he wouldn't endanger anyone, the villagers in Wave Country all seemed like nice people. Naruto was taught how to hunt by one of the fishermen of course fish were easy to catch for him, but this would be the first time he's doing it without supervision. We now find Naruto sneaking through the forest following tracks of a deer he's been following for the last hour when he comes to a strange sight, an unconscious woman at first he's cautious this could be a trap after all, of course he changes his mind when he hears a growling sound and sees a wolf circling the unconscious women. He quickly rushes in and surprises the wolf by tackling it to the ground, it then tries to rip his throat out, he's not the strongest boy he's still only five after all. He quickly stabs it in the throat with his knife, blood gushes out of the wound and goes all over Naruto, he keeps stabbing the wolf though as it seems to refuse to die, after the 20th stab the wolf finally gives one last yelp before just collapsing on top of Naruto, for a few minutes he just lies there before finally heaving it off him. He wipes the blood off his face before again approaching the women, he turns her over and sees a headband, she's a ninja although he doesn't know from where it's not Konoha's symbol he knows that much, there must be other ninja villages. He looks at her closely she's a beautiful woman he sees blood in her hair so maybe she hit her head or something, he's not a doctor so he wouldn't know, other than that he can't seem to find anything else wrong with her not that he'll check under her clothes. He looks around wondering where she came from he's thinking about maybe going to Tsunami to get some help, when he hears a groan and looks back at the women she slowly pulls herself into a sitting position before touching her head, man that hurts. Naruto looks at her, are you okay? She looks at him a five-year-old boy staring back at her. He's covered in blood but she doesn't think it's his she then sees the dead wolf, taking on a wolf at his age, he's obviously got a death wish. Did you kill the wolf? He just shrugs and grins, would you rather I let him eat you, that was what he or she was planning on doing. She chuckles, you're a bit young to be a knight in shining armor. Naruto shows her his knife, I have a sword does that count? She chuckles, I think that's a knife but it seemed to have done the job still not very bright if you ask me. I doubt your parents would be happy that you're fighting wolves. Naruto just sighs, I'm an orphan I have no parents. She nods and stands up, I'm sorry, so what are you doing here? He grins, hunting. He then starts to walk away, have fun Kunoichi-chan. He continues to walk away until he hears her tell him to wait so he looks over his shoulder, what now? I'm kinda busy you know, I have to eat tonight. She smiles, such a spirited little boy aren't you? You want some help? I do owe you after all. He points to her headband, haven't you gotten a mission or something, you're a ninja going by your headband. She looks at him and pulls off her headband, so I'm a ninja, why can't I remember maybe it has something to do with my head wound. I guess I am. I can't remember anything well not much anyway so what's the name of my hero? He looks at her, she's funny. My name is Nar, Menma Yukita. She raises an eyebrow at his little slip, he's hiding something, I wonder why, not that it's any of my business, and he knows I'm a kunoichi so he must know about ninjas. Menma huh, my name is Tabuki, but don't ask me how I know it just popped in my head, that's all I can tell you. If it's alright with you I think I'll stay with you for a while, unless you have a problem with that. It's his turn to raise an eyebrow, is that wise, she could stay in the village why would she want to stay with me? Why would you want to stay with me though? She smiles, well, I sort of owe you don't I, plus I can help you with your hunting. He shrugs, she is a kunoichi, she could regain her memory and we could fight those anbu if they come again. Fine let's go. She smiles and follows him and they both start hunting, she surprises Naruto by her use of weapon throwing knives plus she's deadly accurate, he grins, note to self don't piss her off. It's also surprising to her but she just goes with the flow maybe it's instinct or something, 
between them they kill two rabbits, a small deer and a small boar. Naruto carries the rabbits and the small boar while she carries the deer back to his cabin. They put all the dead animals on a table, and they start skinning them. Tsunami has given him a large cauldron-like object for his hunting, so after they skin everything she asks Menma to start making the broth while she cuts vegetables to make a stew. After a few days she starts slowly getting her memory back, and she starts training him in the ways of the ninja, he knows something by being in Konoha for five years, but she teaches him much more. Of course first it's the boring parts Naruto thinks learning about what being a ninja entails. After that she starts training Naruto, Menma in Taijutsu, within the first week of training he's learned every stance, punch, kick, block, grab she knows, he seems to be a quick learner more of a hands-on kind of kid to reading as she saw how bored he got listening to her talking about being a ninja. When she's taught him her style she moves on to her weapons, she doesn't use kanai which he already knew but throwing knives, again it surprises her how quick he learns it how to hold them how the best way to release the knives, he's just as accurate as her it seems. After three weeks of intense training she moved on to chakra control exercises as she realized he had problems creating a normal bunshin. The first exercise she taught him was tree climbing of course he thought she was nuts he could do that already, until she showed him what she really meant and then he was mesmerized. She's always giggling at his antics and eager student always wanting to know more. It took him about a week and a half to learn the tree climbing exercise then he went straight into the walking on water exercise which took the rest of the week. By the time he's finished the water walking exercise her memories are almost back so she tells him more about herself, she tells him she's from another ninja village called Sunagakar, and it's surrounded by sand, it amazes him because he's only heard of Konoha well because he lived there not that he'd tell her yet. When she's told him about the other ninja villages he finally tells her everything about himself, why he's here and everything, he doesn't know why really he's never trusted anyone really well he trusted Nako, Gigi Sandame, and the Ichirakus but he trusts her also. She listens to everything and by what he's describing of his village and the villagers' hatred of him it reminds her so much of her nephew Gara. she's never had the opportunity to visit Konoha but she wonders if all villages that have Jinchuriki treat them like that. After he told her the truth about who he was something happened the Kayubi introduced himself for the first time and he found out why he was hated and it brought him to tears, was he really a monster, it didn't make sense, he never acted like a monster, so why did they call him one, he'd never hurt anyone before. For over a week after Kayubi made himself known to Naruto he had nightmares, Tabuki had to hold him as he slept and calm him down, she became a mother figure to Naruto after not being able to have children herself because of a mission a year ago when she was captured and raped, she was able to escape but found out she could no longer have kids because of what happened so to her Naruto was her surrogate son. After the week was up Naruto finally told her what happened, she was shocked not knowing that it was possible not that she ever asked her anything, she was also angry how could that damn fox scare a five-year-old like that if she could she'd have words with the damn fox, she then just comforted him. After the discussion he calmed down. The next problem soon became apparent, he'd already told her about the Anbu from Konoha searching for him, the first time she actually saw them was when she was shopping for supplies and she saw them she overheard the Anbu asking about her surrogate son, of course to the village Naruto is Menma as he's not going to tell them the truth, nobody ever gave him up either so that was a relief. When she returned she encountered a second group of Anbu they must have separated and searched themselves they had found Naruto and were engaging him in battle, they couldn't get close to him though as he kept throwing his throwing knives at them to keep them from casting jutsus he was just too fast for them. She dropped her supplies and pulled out her own throwing knives and attacked also, a two-pronged attack caught the Anbu by surprise and because of the deadly accuracy of them both none of the Anbu stood a chance to the onslaught. When they were all dead Tabuki first checked her surrogate son for injuries before checking the Anbu, what she found confused her, these Anbu had a strange seal on their tongues. She disposed of their bodies with a Kaden Jutsu, after this incident Naruto, Menma introduced Tabuki to Tazuna and his daughter Tsunami. 
They all got on really well but neither Naruto, Menma or Tabuki told them who they really were that was for their sake as well as their own. A few months later it was Naruto's sixth birthday and Tsunami baked Naruto, Menma a birthday cake this was all new to Naruto as he had told them some white lies about his early childhood although Tabuki knew the truth but kept that a secret. Tsunami and Tabuki both agreed that this year would be different they would show him what having a birthday really meant and experience that Naruto, Menma would just love, they all got him presents. Tsunami made him some clothes, such as boots, combat trousers, a black shirt and a black jacket with a hood, she had heard about this material it was strange to her but apparently it changed to fit you like when you aged it also adjusted to your changes in height or weight. Tazuna made him some tools for his cabin that he shared with Tabuki, Tazuna had made an extension when he found out that Tabuki lived there also, to Tazuna and his daughter Tabuki was Naruto, Menma's cousin who had been looking for him. Tabuki made Naruto, Menma more throwing knives, and holsters, some kuniya and shurikens, and lastly ninja wire, so when he's strong enough he will be a great ninja. The only bad thing was Tazuna trying to get Naruto, Menma to try sake, of course it ended badly as Tabuki and Tsunami found out and when the night was over Tazuna was covered with bruises which brought Naruto to laugh his head off. When Naruto and Tabuki returned to the cabin Naruto told Tabuki that it was the greatest birthday he's ever had and couldn't wait for more, she just chuckled and told him if he loved his birthday, then Christmas would be twice as exciting. Every couple of months the strange Anbu would come again, they did change their tactics though like taking villagers as hostages and threatening to kill them if he didn't go with them of course that never worked either they never knew about Tabuki and she was always his trump card so every time they tried the tactic it ended with death. One time they almost caught him out, Tabuki was in the village with Tsunami collecting supplies as Tsunami had met someone called Kaiza a fisherman who had joined the village and they had quickly fallen in love and she had fallen pregnant so that was why Tabuki was with her now. The way the strange Anbu had almost caught him out was by using a Yame Ichiraku, they must have found out that before he left Konoha she and her father were close to the young Naruto, of course when Naruto saw her he didn't think much of it thinking it was another ploy until one of the Anbu called her a Yame Ichiraku and that got Naruto's attention although his facial expressions didn't give anything away. Naruto inwardly smiled, if that's how pretty a Yame-chan now looks then she's very pretty. He then notices something's off, nice try although she had black eyes not blue nice try though, you almost had me. He then throws a throwing knife at the skull of a Yame. He then smirks as the Ayame in front of him dissolves into mud. The Anbu were surprised by this how did he figure it out of course they didn't have much time to think on it as their deaths quickly followed. A year later and again Naruto had had his seventh birthday two days ago, this would be another unexpected twist in Naruto's life, a life of sadness it seems. Naruto and Tabuki are sparing when Tabuki stops. Naruto-kun, I want you to run as fast as you can into the woods, they're here again but there are too many this time around, maybe one survived or was hidden, don't come back you hear me. Naruto looks at her, I can stay and fight with you we can take them, Please Tabuki-chan, don't send me away. She looks at him in shame, please Naruto-kun, do this for me, run I'll be okay just go now, before they arrive. He looks at her and tears start pouring down his face but he quickly nods and runs away, he wants to stay and fight but she won't let him he knows that, she won't be able to concentrate on the fight if all she's doing is worrying about him, the element of surprise is not on their side this time they must have found out about her. As soon as he reaches the forest he keeps running she looks back, be safe my son. She then looks back at 50 Anbu come into the clearing, Naruto is watching from the trees he saw the 50 Anbu come into the clearing he wants to ignore her order and help but he doesn't so just runs. He hides in a cave he found it must have been a badger or other animal's house or something he then listens to the sounds of battle, and he just cries hoping his mother figure would be okay. Two hours later and the sounds of battle is over, he's about to crawl out and run back to Tabuki when he spots five injured Anbu come into the clearing that leaves a bad taste in his mouth. 
He waits until they have moved on before he crawls out of his hiding place and creates five Mizu Bunshins. He tells them what to do and they all nod and run up trees and get into position. Naruto runs up the tree and nods to his clones who all pull out throwing knives and let loose on the unsuspecting Anbu. They all drop dead before they know what happened. He checks their tongues and realizes they're the same as before something doesn't make sense he knows Gigi wouldn't send them to kill him so it must be someone else but who. He slowly makes his way back to where the battle took place what he sees is utter chaos, destroyed trees bodies all over the place it's a bloodbath, Anbu literally cut in half from Tabuki's wind attacks. When she found out he was also a wind user she helped him improve his attacks, and told him about using wind chakra on his throwing knives, which he did. He is only seven but he's used to death by now although this is scary to see then he sees Tabuki lying on the ground. He slowly approaches her always on guard like she taught him there could be more Anbu about but it seems there isn't so he drops down beside her again there is blood dripping down her head and she has slashes all over her body it must have been one hell of a battle. He then sees a deep wound in her chest, and her clutching it with her hand. Tabuki-chan, are you okay, answer me. She slowly looks up. Naruto-kun, I'm sorry, I'm dying, I got cocky I guess and got caught. He looks at her already crying, you can't leave me, you're not going to die. She smiles and then coughs up some blood, the wound must have caused internal bleeding or something. Naruto-kun, I see you as my son, I told you I can't have kids but you are the son I could never have, and I love you okay, I'm so sorry for leaving you all alone again, please forgive me, but you have Tazuna and Tsunami. Naruto's now bawling this is too much for him. Tabuki pulls herself up into a sitting position although it hurts her greatly to do so, she then hugs Naruto, I love you, Naruto-kun, remember that although I am leaving you, she puts her hand over his heart, know that I'll always be in your heart now stop crying. He looks at her, it's not fair. She quickly wipes the tears from his face, remember Naruto-kun, this is what could happen the price to pay for being a ninja, now focus and listen to me. You have the heart of a ninja, you make me very proud to have known you, you're my special boy, mourn me but don't take too long you have to remain strong and don't be reckless. Naruto looks at her, why didn't you go back to Suna, you would have been safe, why stay with me, now I'm going to lose you also, I'll be alone again. She smiles, and leave my son all alone, not going to happen Naruto-kun. So why didn't you take me with you? I would have gone there with you. She winces in pain, although I would have liked that but because you're like my nephew, a Jinchuriki, your life would have been miserable, plus I have been away too long, who's to say they wouldn't consider me a missing nin, I couldn't take the risk. Plus Naruto-kun, if Konoha ever found out they would attack us thinking we kidnapped you, I would never allow that. He sniffs, but, but, she smiles, I'm so sorry. My time is almost up, just promise me one last thing, seal up my body in the special seal I told you about to preserve my body, and return it to Suna, please do that for me, you remember about the seal right? He nods, I remember, and I love you to mom. She smiles, and I love you my beautiful strong little boy, I have no regrets about anything you hear me, these last two years have been some of the most happiest moments of my life, goodbye Naruto-kun. He looks down at her, Tabuki-chan, stay with me, don't leave me please. There is no answer so he knows she's dead. He's just sitting there hugging Tabuki for over 10 minutes when he hears a gasp and looks up and sees Tazuna, Tsunami, Kaiza and her young son Inari. Tazuna looks at what happened he then looks at Tabuki and checks for a pulse he turns to Tsunami and Kaiza and shakes his head before looking at Naruto, are you hurt Menma? Naruto just shakes his head, no, but they killed her they will pay for this. Tazuna sighs and pats Naruto on the shoulder, come on Menma, let's bury her okay, then we should head back to our home you need to get cleaned up you're a mess. Naruto looks at Tazuna. I have a last request from Tabuki to fulfill. He opens up a scroll and places it on the ground, help me places Tabuki on the scroll, she will be preserved and I will return her to her home that was her last wish. 
Kaiza being the fittest picks up Tabuki and places her on the seal and they all watch as her body disappears into the scroll and it gets sealed up. Tsunami then takes Naruto's hand while Inari has the other one. Come on Menma, let's get you cleaned up and some food and you then you should rest you have had a traumatic event okay. Naruto just nods his head and they return to Tazuna's house. Kaiza and Tazuna will deal with the bodies when Naruto sleeps although they wonder what just happened. It's been a week since Tabuki's death, in that time Naruto was very quiet he barely interacted with anyone, Tsunami was really worried about him but he just told her he was fine, the only time he acted normal was around Inari, Inari would always want to play with Naruto and he played with Inari cuddling him and letting him sit in Naruto's lap. Tsunami liked that her son seemed to wake Naruto up, if only when he was awake. Naruto after a week returned to his house, but it just wasn't the same he and Tabuki-chan had made his log cabin into a real home but with her gone it just felt empty. He remembered Tabuki's last words about him mourning but not for too long, he knows Tazuna, Kaiza and Tsunami are worried about him, but he knows that not Tabuki-chan's gone he knows he has to leave himself, he can't put any of them in danger he knows he should have left ages ago, although they're good friends these weird Anbu won't stop coming and he doesn't want any of them to be used against him. Neither Tazuna, Kaiza, or Tsunami had seen Naruto for two days Inari really missed Naruto and cried a lot. They're all in Tazuna's house eating lunch when there's a knock at the door, Tsunami heads to the door and opens it and is surprised to see Naruto, she immediately knows something's wrong because he's armed and it seems he's planning on leaving. Menma, it's good to see you where have you been for two days, please come in. Naruto just nods and heads inside they're all glad to see him but knows something's up. Naruto looks around at them, I'll get straight to the point, I'm leaving, I have thought about it for a while, you saw what happened a week ago, Anbu have been after me for two years, Tabuki-chan died because she was around me, I don't want that happening to you. Tazuna sighs, Menma, you're seven years old, where are you going to go, I know you miss your cousin but there is no reason to run away. Naruto sighs, she wasn't my cousin, I'm sorry for lying to you, and yes there is a reason to run I just told you, I'm leaving to keep you all safe, I'll miss you all, but I've been thinking about this all week, every few months they come for me now Tabuki-chan's dead, what's to stop them from coming back in a week or so? I know I'm seven but Tabuki-chan trained me well I can look after myself. Kaiza sighs, there is no way of persuading you as there your mind's made up. Naruto nods, yes, I don't want to see any of you get hurt because I'm here. Tsunami quickly hugs Naruto then heads to the kitchen and starts making some more food. After a short time, she comes back, here Naruto here's some food to keep you going we will all miss you. Inari will miss you a lot he sees you as his big brother. Naruto looks around and hugs all of them with Inari being the last before he stands up he takes the food Tsunami provided for him and puts it in a scroll. He then heads to the door, he's just about to open the door when Tazuna talks, so do you know where you are going? Naruto turns around and shakes his head, no, not really, but it would be best if I didn't tell you anyway for your own safety. Tazuna nods, take care Menma. Naruto smiles he knows he's held things from them especially his proper name but again he's doing that for their own safety. I will return sometime to check up on you guys. He turns to Kaiza, keep them safe Kaiza. He then turns to the door and opens it before heading out. He knows this is a sad thing for them like Tazuna said he's only 7 years old but he's been trained well by Tabuki-chan. As he's walking his annoying tenant makes himself known again so you're on the move again you may hate me and I hardly care but I am sorry you lost Tabuki she trained you well now it's time to continue your training but first we have a place to stop a place vital for you kit. What are you talking about furball like I want anything from you. Hate me all you want, but remember this I don't want you dying because you are weak because if you die I die. So that's why I never died in Konoha. Yes Kit, but if you did die I'd only be gone for three years. So you'd just continue wreaking havoc. Yes so are you going to listen to me now so we can get you stronger. Fine, Furball what do you want now? 
There is a ruined village that you will find interesting it's about your clan. Naruto after hearing that stops in shock, my clan, I'm not from a clan. Actually kid you are, although your clan was destroyed years before you were born. Kyuubi can feel that sadness coming from his container your clan was a great clan people feared them they were seal masters or fuinjutsu experts, kenjutsu, that's swordsmen by the way and ninjutsu specialists, think on this it took Karigakur, Iwagakur, and Kumogakur to take it out they paid a heavy price. Naruto listens to everything finding out about his clan it was saddening to know his clan is no more the fact it took three villages to take his clan out and the fact they paid a heavy price made Naruto happy, he was glad Sunagakur never helped seeing as Tabuki-chan was from Sunagakur that would have been painful. So where is this place we're going to and what's it called? Luckily we're not that far so it should take a few hours as it's on the other side of wave country. So let's get a move on as that old drunk said you're only seven, so if you come across any ninjas you're gonna be dead so keep your senses open. Okay then let's go furball. Naruto heads off using his speed rushing through the trees he stops after a few hours to start eating a bento that Tsunami made him he smiles before tucking in. After that Kyuubi tells him to have a little spar before continuing on with his journey. Kyuubi tells him he has to get on a boat unless he wants to run along the water using the walking on water technique Tabuki-chan taught him. Naruto goes for the water walking technique he found it fun even creating a clone and racing it. A fisherman actually couldn't believe what he was seeing and had to rub his eyes several times before tossing his bottle of sake to the other side of the boat. Naruto didn't pay any attention he was having too much fun after an hour of running Kyuubi informed him to stop at the island he's approaching he does just that he beats his clone but barely and when he gets to the island. He sees the ruins and that makes him sad he sighs as he looks around Kyuubi tells him this is Uzushiogakur or what's left of it. Naruto looks around the village it's sad to wonder how amazing this place was before it was destroyed. It was a great village before it was destroyed but enough about that there is a chakra signature in front of us. What's it hiding and where exactly is it? There seems to be a secret seal against the wall knowing the Uzumaki's like I do it's a hidden base of some kind. Just place your hand right in front of you but first cut your thumb and place it on the wall. Naruto does is asked and at first nothing happens when he hears a loud sound and where he placed his hand the rock seems to move to the side and there's a passage Kyuubi tells him to go follow the passage which he does then to go down the stairs again he does is asked. When he gets down there he comes out into an opening, the first thing he sees is scrolls and books hundreds of them plus weapons, he smiles as he looks around taking the weapons and swinging them from side to side there's so many cool weapons although some strange ones there are katanas, and broadswords, axes, spears, even some shields. He smiles. I think I'll learn to use these weapons. He turns away from the weapons and looks at the scrolls and picks one up and looks through Tabuki Chan told him to look through scrolls even if he hates doing it. He reads a few words nothing really that interesting. He picks up another one and smiles its kenjutsu styles he looks over at the katana and smiles, sweet. He continues looking and sees broadswords and other swords and again smiles he continues looking and sees more swords and looks over at the weapons and grins, so many different sword styles this is going to be awesome. He picks up another scroll and sees styles for the other weapons, well this should keep me busy now I just need clan jutsus. Again he picks up another scroll, and here they are. For the next few days he reads every scroll he finds a clone jutsu called Cage Bunshin, Shadow Clone Technique, this clone jutsu also had another special ability as well as it being a solid clone it had the ability of memory transfer, QB said this would come in handy for reading all the scrolls he suggested he lets the Cage Bunshins read them while he starts training on what he's already learned. After two weeks of reading from his clones everything is done he started learning fuinjutsu and has learned how to seal up stuff so his first job is to seal all the weapons followed by all the scrolls and everything else, this is clan jutsu so should never fall into enemies hands well this was what Kyuubi suggested. It was strange how Kyuubi knew so much about his clan and he'll ask at a later time. He already has his next destination in mind the land of iron. Kyuubi approved and said he could continue to train, 
maybe learning so much more using some of the skills he's learned through his clan such as strategy, and clan jutsus. Three years later, Naruto's been in the land of iron for three years now, he's grown up well, he's about five, five right now quite tall for his age, he's also put on some muscle, strangely enough after living there for a while he found a former samurai no longer able to serve as a samurai through injury after monitoring Naruto and realizing his potential took him on as an apprentice. That was two years ago, during that time he learned to use all of the Uzumaki weapons from Uzushiogakure, he's also learned all of the clan jutsus, his sensei Masanobu Masato wasn't best happy knowing he was using ninjutsu thinking he was a samurai, when he was told by Naruto he was a ninja and from Konoha before he left. Masanobu agreed to allow him to train. He enjoyed his life on the land of iron, he didn't just train he made some friends with some of the samurai's kids, he trained with them in kenjutsu. He eats some new types of food and also participated in a few skirmishes with ronin samurai and bandits. Fighting in those types of battles were certainly different fighting in a unit was different than the hit and run tactics he was used to when fighting those strange anbu, they never came to the land of iron not that he wouldn't have just killed them like before. It was also so peaceful when he wasn't training or helping out as a samurai, he was surprised that Mifune the leader of the samurai took notice of him after hearing about his strategies when dealing with the bandits and ronins. Naruto's biggest test was when a group of missing nin entered the land of iron, there was about 100 of them at first Naruto went there to do some recon for Mifune, his clones found out the numbers. The skills of them and what their goals were they thought numbers would keep them safe such arrogance Naruto thought it reminded him of what he heard from Tabuki-chan about the Uchiha and Hyuga clan. He hardly remembered them from when he was there, Tabuki-chan told him how arrogant they were, how especially the Uchihas had a superiority complex and they thought everyone was inferior to them. The Hyuga clan were so full of themselves like they were royalty. After finding out everything he needed to know he sent a clone back to Mifune with what he wanted to know, the clone returned with 300 samurai the clone informed him he was to lead them in the battle, this was a surprise to Naruto he's only 10 after all, the samurai was also surprised. Once they arrived Naruto went over the enemy's numbers, he sets it up so the samurai are completely surrounding the enemy's positions. Once they were in position he created several clones and sent them off to kill the sentries silently then dispel. They did just that, once he received the memory of the sentries deaths he then had clones sent to each division of the samurai. Once they arrived they were to inform the archers to begin their assault. There were two volleys of arrows sent into the camp with no sentries out they were sitting ducks. Many of the ninjas were cut down by the arrows. After the second volley, the samurai made their attack. It was utter chaos in the camp they were just about to sleep for the night until the arrows were unleashed it caught them all by surprise. Then before they were prepared samurai attacked the camp from all directions. The battle was short Naruto's clones sent several jutsus at the enemies before the samurai made contact. Naruto also engaged the enemy. The missing nin were all killed surprisingly only 10 samurai were killed several were injured though but overall it was a success. Mifune was there to witness everything along with Naruto's sensei Masanobu Masato. They were both impressed with Naruto although like wave country they knew him as Menma Yukita. After this, he continued working for Mifune, after that battle the samurai just loved Naruto, Menma he was a hero and a great strategist in years to come. For another year he stayed with Masanobu and Mifune, until he told them it was time for him to move on. He'd informed them that he was a ninja at heart but being a samurai was one of the greatest events in his life and he'll never forget what he's done and learned. After leaving the land of iron, he traveled around the elemental nations, just being a normal traveler was interesting he changes his attire every few days so nobody knew what he looked like, he did see Anbu but not often and he was able to evade them. It wouldn't be advisable to always kill them when he could just stalk them and see what they're doing. They asked about Naruto but with him being gone so long there was no way they'd know what he looks like and he's never in any place long enough to get attached to anyone long enough for them to know about him besides he always used a henge so they never saw the real him. 
Tabuki Chan would be so proud of him he's learned so much from her and yet so much more. He's not yet visited any of the main villages of Iowa, Kumo, Suna and certainly not Kiri seeing as there's a war going on. He wants to visit Suna to give them the scroll with Tabuki Chan's body but he'd have to find her niece Tamari, or her brothers and he's not strong enough yet, but in time he will go to Suna who knows maybe he'll end up meeting Tamari sometime who knows. He has seen the odd ninja team along his travels none from Konoha though or Suna for that matter but just giving the scroll to any random Suna team would be weird and they'd ask what's in it especially if they opened up the scroll they'd probably think he killed her. For that matter, Tamari could also think that. Another year goes by he's thought about returning to Wave Country but hasn't just yet he did end up going to Uzushiogaku again, just being around this village was weird and strangely enough soothing, this was his clan's home after all so in a way it feels like home to him also. He ended up staying there for a while he caught fish he hunted animals on the island he just lived a carefree life. That is until he heard a disturbing rumor about Wave Country. It was once such a peaceful place but he heard rumors about some man called Gato. He's heard about him from when he was in the land of iron. He seemed to be just a businessman but when he heard rumors about him being in Wave Country, then when he left Uzushiogakur he heard that nobody can enter Wave Country because of Gato. To any normal people that would be a problem but to him who's trained as a ninja he can get in. He left Uzushiogakur and made his way back to Wave Country he saw that nobody was allowed to enter again not a problem for him. As he just ran on the water and made his way to Tazuna's. Before he got to Tazuna's he entered the small village and what he saw angered him greatly he saw some thugs dragging a woman away she was older than he was. He heard a man saying that was his wife and not to take her they ended up beating him up and taking her he quickly got to the man who told her she's become a slave or worse with Gato. Naruto quickly left and the two thugs not expecting any confrontation were casually walking back they'd tied her up and was over the shoulder of one of the thugs while they were laughing. Naruto quickly ran at them and before they knew it they were both dead with throwing knives in the back on the neck. He grabbed the women before she hit the ground. He placed her on the ground before using a kaiden jutsu to dispose of their bodies. He then carried her back to the man who was beaten up, he was thanked by the man and the women who had woken up. He smiled and told them to be careful from now on, and Gato would be dealt with soon enough. He asked them about Gato he heard he was only a businessman and they told him the truth about him that he had taken over the country, they told him Gato had crippled the economy. After they told him what they knew he left them and headed to Tazuna's place. He knocked on the door and it was opened by Tsunami. She looked at him fearful of him being one of Gato's thugs. Naruto smiles at her, Tsunami it's been a while how are you? Tsunami looks at him she sees the blonde hair and blue eyes, Menma, is that you? He nods, that it is. She smiles and then hugs him, Menma you look so handsome, it's great to see you, I just wish the occasion was under better circumstances. Naruto sighs, I know Gato, I stopped two thugs from kidnapping a woman to sell her to Gato. She shakes her head, I know Menma it's been happening for a few months now, he came here and quickly took over. Naruto nods, where's Tazuna, Kaiza, and Inari? She quickly starts to cry and he looks down in shock he's about to speak again when she speaks, Gato killed Kaiza, Inari's changed so much he's so angry now you know how he was well he was only a kid when you left, but he talks about there being no heroes anymore and everyone who goes against Gato will die. Naruto sighs, damn it, I left to save them and then look what happens this Gato guy fucks everything up well this won't end well for him. I'm so sorry. Kaiza was a great guy but what about Tazuna is he okay? She sniffs. Tazuna's okay since Kaiza died Tazuna's got worse with drinking but he's trying to fight back he's trying to build a bridge to the mainland but now Gato's trying to kill him for it so he's gone to get some help. Naruto nods, I see and who's he gone to? Don't say it's Konoha. He waited for her to reply the reason she didn't say anything was because Tazuna only had enough money for a C-ranked mission although she's smart enough to know that it would be a higher ranked mission, 
He's gone to help from Konoha but we're poor so we only had enough for AC rank mission but Gato has missing Nin and loads of thugs. Naruto nods. Konoha, damn it. Is my log cabin still there or has it been knocked down? She smiles. It's still there are you staying for a while? He smirks. Yay, so where's Inari? She sighs. In the village probably. He pats her on the shoulder. I've missed your cooking Tsunami-chan. She smiles, well I wish I could make you a feast, but it's hard the village has nothing and the wild animals Gato says are now his property. Naruto just scoffs, I don't care what he thinks all the animals are for everyone don't worry I'll get you some rabbits or something if any of his thugs get in my way I'll kill them. She sighs, okay Menma, why don't you go find Inari? He grins, will do, I'll be back tonight with some rabbits or deer. She chuckles, whatever you find will be nice. He nods, oh, how long has Tazuna been gone? She rubs her chin, I'd say about a week I think or was it two? He chuckles, losing your memory Tsunami-chan. Shake giggles, of course not menma -kun, now Shu. He smirks before leaving after leaving Tazuna's house he heads back into the village he doesn't get far before someone comes crashing into him. A little boy falls on his ass before looking up and glaring at Naruto, look where you are going. Naruto looks down and grins, damn Inari, you've grown up since I saw you last. Inari glares at Naruto the looks closer the blonde hair and blue eyes, Menma. Naruto grins, been a while kiddo. Inari then jumps up and hugs him, I missed you so much when did you get back, Nisan today and I know what happened I'm sorry about your dad, he was a great guy. Inari then starts to cry and hugs Naruto, Gato killed him, I hate him. Naruto nods, come on let's go to my house and we can talk. Inari nods and they head to Naruto's old house. It doesn't take long it's been a while since Naruto's been here but it seems it's been cleaned Inari grins, I keep it tidy I come here a lot. Naruto chuckles and pats Inari on the shoulder and they sit down, Inari grins, so Menma Nisan did you travel a lot did you have fun? Naruto laughs at Inari, it was more training than fun Inari, but yes I did have some fun on occasion. I heard your grandpa's gone to Konoha. Inari nods and groans, they're only going to die Gato can't be killed. Naruto sighs, Inari. I know you don't believe in heroes anymore but trust me I'll kill Gato for what he did, you guys are like family and he will pay for killing your dad, Kaiza was my friend. Inari looks at Naruto, I don't want you to die Nisan. Naruto grins, trust me Gato's as good as dead. Inari nods, I saw when you said Konoha there was anger in your voice. Naruto stands up and walks to the kitchen and grabs a bottle of sake one of Tabuki-chan's bottles. Inari, I want to tell you some things, first my name isn't Menma Yukita, it's Naruto, Uzumaki Naruto, and I was from Konoha before I ran away, I was hated and attacked by the villagers so I ran away, so that's why I don't have any love for Konoha so the team that comes I'll have to avoid. Inari looks shocked but just nods, it's okay Naruto Nisan, I'll keep your secret I won't tell anyone, and I'll hate them too, they hurt my Nisan, so I'll hate them just like you do. Naruto pats him on the shoulder, I don't hate them all, the villagers were just idiots and ruled by fear, you shouldn't hate them though, and keep my secret from your mum I'm trying to protect you and your mum and grandpa okay. Inari nods, I understand Nisan. Naruto shakes his head, Come on let's get you back home it's getting late, I'll take you home, then I'll go hunting and then come back and your mum can make us something amazing like usual huh? Oh, lastly the team from Konoha don't tell them about me. Inari nods, she makes great food, and yes I won't I'll act all hateful to them. Naruto just shakes his head and laughs, you do that Inari. It's been a week since Naruto returned to wave country. He spent some time with Inari and his mum Tsunami, he's also been causing problems for Gato, one of Gato's establishments in the town that was once a general store was turned into a whorehouse. 
The thugs ran the place kidnapping any women they saw and either killing or beating up their boyfriend or husbands and making the village even more miserable it also made them lose any hope they had in their hearts. Naruto couldn't let this continue so he sneaked into the establishment and dealt with all the thugs if they were normal people he'd feel sad but because of what they did he showed them no mercy. After he dealt with them all he freed all the women there. Gato found out about it but had no idea who did it. Every thug he sent out never returned only their heads were found. This infuriated Gato but again he couldn't find out the person responsible. When Gato sent thugs to find out what happened from the villagers they just hid and again Naruto dealt with them. After some more time Gato stopped sending thugs to investigate as like the others none ever returned only more heads. It was around this time that he found out about Tazuna's return. Gato knew that he couldn't allow Tazuna to finish this bridge so hired missing Nin to deal with him. Usually it wouldn't be a problem but this time Tazuna has hired bodyguards and not any bodyguards but ninjas. He found this out the hard way as Zabuza one of the missing Nin he has under his employ sent the demon brothers Meizo and Gozu to deal with him. It ended badly and they demon brothers failed. Gato was furious at this failure and demanded that Zabuza himself deal with them personally. Zabuza arrogantly said it would be easy but he would realize how wrong he was. When he arrived he was shocked to come across Kakashi Hataki also known as the copycat ninja or Sharingan Kakashi. This would be harder than he expected he now knew why the demon brothers failed but they were Chunin he's a whole different league to them. After a long battle against one of his toughest opponents he was finally beaten he actually managed to capture Kakashi. Unfortunately he underestimated Kakashi's brats well two of them, the two were able to rescue Kakashi who then overpowered him. Zabuza was beaten he knew it, he knew Kakashi was going to kill him luckily his tool Haku had other ideas and saved him as he posed as a hunter nin, Haku threw two Sinban into Zabuza's neck making it seem to everyone that Zabuza was dead. They never even suspected luckily for Haku and Zabuza. After Zabuza and Haku left Tazuna and his bodyguards also known as Team 7 continued to Tazuna's house. Team 7 met Tazuna's family his daughter Tsunami and her son Inari. As soon as Inari heard they were from Konoha he took an immediate dislike to them as Naruto Nisan or to everyone else Menma Nisan told him about Konoha. A day after they arrived at Tazuna's house and Kakashi had woken up and he and his students Sasuke Uchiha, Sakura Haruno, and Mazaguchi Tazawa are sitting down eating breakfast when Inari enters the house he was out meeting Naruto like he usually does. Once he entered the house he scowled at Kakashi and his team. Tsunami enters the main room and sees Inari, oh you're back, where were you this time? He looks at his mum, I was hanging out with Menma Ni San like usual. She rolls her eyes, oh silly me of course you were. Inari nods then points at Kakashi, why are they here, we don't need them, Menma can deal with Gato. Kakashi who's interested in this Menma character as Inari's mentioned him a few times since they arrived, he wonders who he is, now he and his team has to guard his family as well as curious, Tsunami, may I ask who is this Menma, Inari's talking about. Inari glares at Kakashi not wanting them to bother his Nisan he then looks back at his mum, don't tell him anything mum. She not knowing about Naruto, Menma's hate for Konoha thinks her son's just being silly pats him on the shoulder, don't be silly Inari. Inari looks at his mum in shock then quickly runs out of the house Tsunami calls for him but he ignores her and she's confused she's wondering why Inari's acting like this he's been like this since they arrived she just shrugs and turns to Kakashi, Menma Yukita's a nice young man, our family's known him for years. He was five when we first met him. He stayed here for two years until his aunt was killed them he left she died a few days after his seventh birthday, he took her death hard which you can imagine being seven, we had no idea where he went but he returned about a week ago. He and Inari are close as he calls Menma, his Nisan. Kakashi, Sakura and Mazaguchi are paying attention, Sasuke doesn't care this Menma's probably a loser. Kakashi's interested in this Menma and wants to know more about him the fact he arrived when he was five was strange. 
then just leaving at seven is weird something in the back of his mind is telling him this men may he a ninja or trained a normal kid wouldn't just leave at that age. Tsunami, what does this menma look like? She rubs her chin wondering how to describe menma then smiles. Well he has blonde spiky hair but a ponytail going down his back, he was trained by his aunt I think she was a ninja, he has the most beautiful blue eyes and has the cutest marks on his cheeks at first I thought they were scars but they also look like whiskers. Again Sasuke doesn't care and continues eating, Mazaguchi is interested but not that much, Sakura seems interested it would be nice to meet someone else and someone who seems to be Inari's only friend. Then there's Kakashi, Tsunami's answered one question he's a ninja and is now wondering what he did for the last five years before he returned last week, the description she gave of this menma is too much a coincidence, now he puts everything he's heard together he arrived here at age 5 exactly the age when Naruto left, he has to meet him to know that he's alive if it is Naruto after all. After Tsunami explained Menma she's been looking at Kakashi and he seems to be in a daze, are you okay Kakashi, you seem to have zoned out there. He looks up, where can I find this Menma Yukita? Tsunami and Sakura look at Kakashi wondering why he's so interested Tsunami remembered Tabuki's death and the people who came after Menma and her. Could he be looking for Menma, was this why Inari didn't want me to say anything? Kakashi sees her look and seems to be getting worried and he doesn't know why, Tsunami, I don't want to hurt this Menma, I just want to meet him, I think I know him and if it's who I think it is then Menma isn't his real name. Sakura and Tsunami seems interested again Sasuke was slightly curious but didn't care that much, Mazaguchi is curious but isn't that interested. He's not fully recovered from the last battle so isn't going to overexert himself by going anywhere. Tsunami seems to be convinced. He lives in the forest. He has a log cabin. Kakashi nods and starts to leave Sasuke and Mazaguchi remain eating but Sakura for some unknown reason decides to go with Kakashi and he doesn't seem to mind. She's still not sure why she followed Kakashi but Kakashi seems interested in this menma and it might be nice to meet someone maybe her age. It's not as if Sasuke ever talks to her and Mazaguchi has never been that type of guy either he's more talkative than Sasuke but sometimes when he starts talking he never shuts up. Meanwhile, while this was going on Inari's run through the forest he has to warn Naruto about this Kakashi guy he seems far too interested in Naruto. When he arrives at the log cabin he sees Naruto cutting wood outside he pants when he arrives as it's hard running all the way with his short legs. Naruto ni san we've got a problem. Naruto stops cutting the wood and wipes his forehead it's hot out and that's why he's topless he looks at Inari and notice that Inari's been running and is out of breath. What's up Inari, did you forget something you only left a short while ago? Is something wrong? Is your mum and grandpa in trouble? Inari finally stands up and points back the way he's come, everyone's fine, the problem is the team that came to help grandpa they're from Konoha, I wasn't going to tell you as I know you don't like them, but their leader some old guy with grey hair was asking about you. He sighs hoping his mother didn't tell him anything but thinks she will, I tried to tell mum to tell him nothing but she was going to answer him he seemed interested in you. Naruto just groans he'd heard that Tazuna had returned with some ninja team now he knows it's a team from Konoha this could be a problem. Kakashi and Sakura have followed Inari's scent through Pakun, they come out into a clearing and immediately see Inari along with some kid about Sakura's age must be Menma. When Kakashi sees him he immediately sees Minato but then realizes it's Naruto it's really him he seems to be quite built and just by sensing him knows he's powerful maybe even more powerful than Sasuke. This is definitely Naruto the whiskers gave it away not to mention the eyes so much like his father inwardly he's happy, for years he's wondered where Naruto was and is glad he's alive. Now with Sakura, the moment she saw Menma she almost had a nosebleed, He's her age she thinks and but that isn't what's making her blush and almost have a nosebleed no that's because he's topless and the sweat coming down his muscled chest. It's making it hard for her to think straight he's hot, he's got a great body not that she's seen anyone topless body before, but he's very handsome if she does say so herself. Just staring at his chiseled chest and the six pack is making it hard for her to concentrate, 
her blush is easily giving it away. Her inner self has already passed out from a nosebleed after screaming how hot he was. Sakura gulps as a trickle of blood drops from her nose she's embarrassed especially if this menma thinks she's a pervert she does inwardly smirk though she and her inner self that has just woken up both admit one thing, he's so hot, suck on that Eno pig. In Konoha, Eno's bored there's no missions today and she's working in her family's flower shop and she's bored out of her skull, since Sasuke left she's so bored she really hates that Sakura's on the same team as Sasuke. She's almost asleep when she suddenly lifts her head, someone's talking about me, I hope it's Sasuke-kun. Meanwhile, back with Naruto, Menma, Inari, Sakura, and Kakashi nobody's said anything but Naruto's studying the two new arrivals there's something about the older man's arrival something's familiar about him but he doesn't know why. He looks at the girl who's still blushing she's been doing that for the last few minutes not to mention she has a nosebleed, this is nothing new to him when he was in the land of iron girls looked at him like that some adults women also it was kind of unnerving when the adults did it though. It's happened a lot since he's returned here also and now there is this girl he admits she's pretty, if he's honest the prettiest girl he's ever seen but maybe that's because of her hair color it's pretty unique or exotic. He then remembers that he's topless and it's not helping the situation but it's too hot to care right now he then thinks about Konoha and he sighs he's not happy it's Konoha that's arrived and this team seems to be interested in him he hoped that he could remain unnoticed but that isn't going to happen now. Kakashi still watches Naruto still nobody's said anything but Kakashi can tell by Naruto's looks that he's not happy to see them not that he knows why unless he's still angry about what happened before he ran away. He then looks at Inari and sees him glaring at him also and understands now why he's been glaring at him and his team ever since they arrived yesterday. Naruto has finally had enough of the silence, what do you want Konoha Nin? Kakashi sighs before replying. It's nice to see you alive after so long, Naruto. Sakura looks at Kakashi then Naruto and is confused, Tsunami called him Menma Yukita, so why is Kakashi Sensei, calling him Naruto? Kakashi Sensei, I thought his name was Menma Yukita. Kakashi doesn't reply to her question but replies to Naruto, we've been looking for you for years. Naruto growls and scoffs at this ninja who seems to know him he knows they've been looking for him for two years and he's killed enough of them in the two years they came here he was glad they never came to the land of iron. Just thinking about Konoha makes him remember Tabuki-chan and that they killed her. He clenches his fist in anger before replying, I know you have been looking for me sending your anbu after me for two years, demanding I return with them sometimes kidnapping the villages to blackmail them. So I killed them but they kept coming they killed Tabuki Chan, had these seals on their tongues some sort of restriction seal or something. Kakashi and Sakura are both shocked that he's killed people for Sakura it's a sad sign he's definitely her age and yet he's already killed people although she knows that is a kunoichi she will have to kill also. Kakashi is shocked he sees knives on his trousers a strange weapon but that isn't what's shocked him Anbu doing such despicable things but the moment he said they had strange seals on their tongues was surprising as Anbu don't have seals on their tongue. Naruto's getting annoyed that they haven't said anything, what do you want now? Kakashi doesn't know what to say he will inform the Hokage about this maybe he'll know what he's talking about he then tries to calm down the situation he doesn't want a fight. I'm not here to hurt you Naruto, my name is Kakashi. Before he can continue Naruto speaks. Kakashi Hataki, also known as the copycat ninja the man of a thousand jutsus and Sharingan Kakashi, I've heard about you, now I remember you, if I remember you were once Inu, but as you're not wearing a mask anymore means you're not an Anbu. He sees the shock from Sakura. This Naruto knows more about Kakashi sensei than I do how would he know he was an Anbu not even I knew that and he's my sensei. Naruto watches her before turning back to Kakashi, so you now have a team and you're guarding Tazuna while he builds his bridge and you're guarding him from Gato and Zabuza and Haku, I'm guessing this is one of your students. Kakashi is shocked that Naruto seems to know so much about him and the situation, He's changed so much that's certain he wonders how strong he is but it seems he doesn't trust Konoha so getting anything out of him might be a problem. Sakura waves at him, 
Hello Naruto, my name is Sakura, Haruno Sakura, nice to meet you. Naruto looks at Sakura and smiles, Hello Sakura, pretty name Cherry Blossom, I like your hair you don't see many pink haired people around. Again she blushes at his compliment he seems like a nice person not to mention he's attractive which is a plus, personally she hates her pink hair as people make fun of her for it. Inari looks at Naruto and then Sakura then back to Naruto and tugs his leg, what are you doing Nisan, you can't be friends with her. The three of them look at Inari confused before Naruto smiles, why is that Inari, I'm only saying she's pretty. Sakura blushes again she's acting like Hinata from the academy she's like that with everyone but this is a first for her someone is actively complimenting her several times and she likes the feeling. Inari again is confused, but you can't be friends with her. Naruto raises an eyebrow, and why is that? Inari looks at Naruto like he's an idiot, because she's a girl. Everyone looks at Inari before Naruto pats him on the head, really Inari, I didn't know that. Sakura giggles at that and Kakashi just chuckles he's glad the situation seems to have calmed down. Inari is really confused thinking his Nissan must have hit his head or something, you didn't know she was a girl Nissan. Naruto rolls his eyes at Inari but what can you expect he's a kid. I was being sarcastic Inari, so tell me why can't boys be friends with girls. Inari scratches his head a thing he's learned from Naruto, boys can only be friends with boys and girls with girls didn't you know that. Naruto chuckles at Inari and shakes his head, Inari, you are weird. Answer this then Inari, if boys and girls can't be friends how was you born? Inari shrugs, I don't know. Naruto sighs, well your mum and dad became friends Inari, it's usually how kids are born although there are other things involved. Inari is curious, okay and then what happened? Naruto's eyes widen, does he expect me to tell him about sex? That's not really my job, not that I really know about that stuff myself. He then looks at Sakura who blushes as her mum has already had this discussion with her even though she didn't want to hear it. He then scratches his head before thinking he's been told this by Tabuki-chan. Well, let's say your mum and dad spent a lot of time together and got intermate and you was born. Inari still being confused is trying to take this all in. Then what happened and what does intermate mean? Naruto groans not really wanting to have this conversation even looks at Sakura and Kakashi the latter seems to be finding this whose situation amusing not that anyone can tell because of his mask. Sakura is shocked about all this and her inner self isn't helping matters because she keeps suggesting her and Naruto get intermate and the fact he's still topless is making everything worse. Naruto sighs, well I'll tell you what intermate means, well never, but after they were intermate you was born. Inari nods, okay but how? Naruto just face palms himself, well then you appeared in a giant dragon egg. Sakura giggles as does Kakashi neither expecting this or this whole situation. Inari looks amazed then he looks at Naruto and then Sakura, I was born in a dragon's egg really, wait so does that mean you and her will become friends and create a baby in a dragon's egg? Neither Naruto or Sakura expected that and were shocked, Kakashi meanwhile thought this whole situation is totally hilarious, seeing these two blushing. Again Sakura's inner self is already picturing this scenario picturing it seems her inner self has already seemed to have given up on Sasuke-kun, and is telling her to have a baby with the sexy hunk in front of her. Naruto looks at Inari and would rather not have this conversation ever again, maybe you should head home Inari. Your mom's probably worried about you, you haven't had breakfast yet have you, off you go. Inari nods, yay, that's true okay, I'll see you later Nisan. After Inari leaves Sakura and Kakashi follows him, it will take time to get Naruto to trust them even if that amusing discussion just happened. It's been two days since Kakashi and Sakura met Naruto. Kakashi did try and speak to him but he was always gone so he had no choice but to train his team for the inevitable confrontation with Zabuza and that masked ninja. They were all shocked to find out that Zabuza was still alive and that the missing nin was in fact working for Zabuza all along. 
Sakura being the smartest of the three then suddenly realized it was true and told Sasuke and Mazaguchi about the role of the hunter nins, Kakashi was impressed that she figured it out. He took his team into the forest he stopped and started informing them about chakra control he asked if any of them knew what that was and again Sakura guessed correctly. He then goes on to explaining tree climbing of course they all just start laughing. Sasuke then scoffs and says that he knows how to climb trees and his weak teammates also. Mazaguchi just ignores Sasuke it's really annoying that he had to be on the same team as Sasuke Uchiha, he really can't stand him. Sakura just ignores Sasuke although she's starting to hate the way he treats her and Mazaguchi it's like he takes satisfaction in their misery. Kakashi just sighs then explains the process, suffice to say they're all shocked. Meanwhile, Naruto's walking through the forest, he knows that Kakashi's being visiting him but he makes sure to be gone before he arrives. As he's walking her sees someone in the trees he immediately realizes who it is, it's Haku. He met Haku a day ago in the forest gathering herbs, Naruto studied her, he knows everyone in this village plus he can sense chakra in her and a lot of it. He followed her after she left and saw her meet up with Zabuza this explains how he survived as Tazuna told him what happened. Now he sees her again he then senses four other people and it's Kakashi and his team, it seems Haku is spying on them. He's about to leave but decides to see how strong Kakashi's team is. He leans against the tree and watches as Sakura, Sasuke and Mazaguchi start the exercise one he knows all too well from Tabuki-chan's teachings. He wonders what this team is made of he's heard of the Uchiha clan so wonders if he's anything special. Finally they all start the exercise well after Kakashi passes them all Kunai he guesses to mark their progress he watches as Sakura gets it pretty much straight away and gets quite high on her first attempt. Then he watches as Sasuke and Mazaguchi tries to copy her and they fail. He saw the look Sasuke gave Sakura and it wasn't good he was pissed that was quite obvious for all to see. Sakura sat on a branch and watches her teammates they didn't get it like she did when she was about to tell Sasuke about her accomplishment but just be looking at him made her stay quiet. She continue watching her teammates until she spots someone watching it seems that Naruto seems to have sensed her so he looks up at her and she smiles and waves at him, hey Naruto. Kakashi, Sasuke, and Mazaguchi and Haku who hasn't even sensed him finally notice Naruto. Haku just continues watching but she is interested to know how she never sensed him. Kakashi unknowingly is thinking on the same lines as Haku he's shocked that he never even noticed him he's really interested to know his skills. Mazaguchi hasn't seen Naruto before and wonders how long he's been there. Sasuke looks at Naruto and scowls although he's wondering how strong he is maybe he should challenge him he seems weak so will probably realize who he's dealing with nobody beats him he's an Uchiha the elite the best of the best. Naruto ignores the stares from everyone it's obvious Sasuke wants to fight him but he ignores him and focuses on Sakura, nice work Sakura, it seems you have pretty good chakra control. Sasuke saw Naruto look at him then just ignore him and that pissed him off he'd show him that he's not to be ignored he steps away from the tree and approaches Naruto. Naruto looks away from Sakura and looks at Sasuke and rolls his eyes his emotions are so easy to understand no doubt it's his Uchiha arrogance he thinks he can get what he wants he can only surmise that Sasuke is about to challenge him. He's proven right when Sasuke challenges him to a spar well more like demanded. Naruto had already turned away from him. Sakura was happy that someone said something nice about what she did she already gathered that Sasuke wouldn't say anything and Mazaguchi is to focus on the task at hand not hearing anything from Kakashi hurt though. She quickly makes her way down from the tree she was in and wonders if Naruto will fight Sasuke she is curious to know how strong Naruto is though. Naruto just scoffs at Sasuke's challenge, tell me this Uchiha, why should I bother wasting my time with you, what do I get out of this, I have nothing to prove to anyone least of all you. It's Sasuke's turn to scoff then he smirks, so that's it is it, you're scared, I'm not surprised, you finally realize that you're against an Uchiha, I'm not surprised you're scared I'm an elite you'd only be embarrassing yourself. 
Naruto just rolls his eyes, Uchiha arrogance why am I not surprised? Scared of a wuss like you, please, you think because you're an Uchiha that you're automatically the best there is what arrogance, I've met many idiots like you and killed several of them, as I said before I have nothing to prove to you or anyone else. I'd be the one embarrassing you, I wonder could your arrogance handle that, but as you challenge me and ass kicking from me is something you deserve and ass kicking to show you that you're nothing special. Sasuke clenches his fist and grinds his teeth not only has this nobody insulted not only him but his clan oh he's going to show him who's best. He gets into his Uchiha Taijutsu stance and grins, oh it will be you who gets his ass kicked you like everyone else will know that the Uchiha are the best, I will show you this myself. Naruto looks at Sakura then Kakashi and then Mazaguchi it seems Sakura was worried, Mazaguchi, and Kakashi seemed interested in this he shrugs and pulls away from the tree he was leaning against and approaches Sasuke and just walks past him getting into his own taijutsu stance. Kakashi walks up to them, okay you two this is a taijutsu only match Hajime. Naruto stares at Sasuke he can just feel the arrogance from Sasuke, he thinks he's already won, Naruto's been around arrogant people before it's the type of person he hates the most and now he's fighting another one. This isn't just any arrogant arsehole it's an Uchiha, Tabuki-chan, told him stories about them, she said that all Uchihas are arrogant assholes, who look down on everyone, well they did before they were wiped out. It seems that nobody told this Uchiha about his arrogance, well Naruto inwardly grins knowing that he's about to destroy this shithead, and knock him down to size. Naruto gets into his stance and watches his opponent do the same with that arrogant smirk never leaving his face, Naruto just shakes his head. Sakura watches her crush and Naruto getting ready to fight she doesn't know who she wants to win, it should be interesting she glances at Kakashi and Mazaguchi who both seem to be interested in just how strong Naruto is, she then looks back at Sasuke and Naruto. Sasuke looks at Naruto he scoffs as this Menmar Naruto seems to think he's all that well he's about to prove that he's a nobody, he rushes at Naruto he starts off with some punches. Naruto just smirks and moves his head to the side making Sasuke miss every punch, is that all you've got you're so slow. Sasuke seethes, well stop moving then. Naruto just rolls his eyes, what kind of moron stands there to be hit, speed up already. This just causes Sasuke to see he starts using kicks but like before Naruto just either dodges each attack or knocks his punches or kicks to the side, he looks at Sasuke and can see the sweat dripping down Sasuke's face he just scoffs. In over 5 minutes Sasuke's not landed a single hit on Naruto, but Naruto's not even attempted to attack Sasuke, to Kakashi and the others they're wondering why Naruto's not attacked Sasuke yet, whereas Sasuke is fuming not only is Naruto making a fool of him, but he's not even fighting back. Naruto looks at Sasuke and laughs, what's the matter Uchiha, all bark and no bite, I've heard about your clan, a bunch of arrogant fools seems you're no different, well I've grown bored with your pathetic attempt of a sparse so I'll just end it right now. Sasuke grinds his teeth before he stops and activates his Sharingan, before I was only testing you now the real fight begins. Naruto rolls his eyes, before he grins and before anyone notices he vanishes the next moment everyone hears a grunt and look at Sasuke and see Naruto in front of him with his fist on Sasuke's gut. Sasuke staggers back before falling to one knee and glares at Naruto, how, how did he move so fast that my Sharingan never detected him? this isn't possible. A lucky shot it won't happen again. Naruto grins, you wanna bet. Again Naruto vanishes and again he appears in front of Sasuke this time kneeing him in the face causing Sasuke to fly backwards into a tree and falls on his ass. Naruto smirks, you were saying Uchiha, you're so slow, two attacks and I've already broken two of your ribs and broken your nose, you still want to fight all you'll get is more broken bones if that's what you want then fine just bring it. Sasuke punches the ground and rushes at Naruto but before he's moved more than a few inches Naruto appears in front of him and gives a 7 hit combo a punch to Sasuke's face, a 2 hit combo to Sasuke's gut, a elbow to Sasuke's shoulder blade, followed by another to his other shoulder blade, 
his last two attacks are knees to Sasuke's own knees. After the seven hit combo Sasuke crashes to the ground he's in so much pain this bastard humiliated him how did he move so fast his moves were so powerful his whole body hurts. All of team seven are in shock and not only them but also Haku, she can't believe how strong and fast Naruto is, this will cause a problem for Zabuza sama Kakashi can't believe anything Naruto moved so fast his moves were brutal, he can only imagine how much pain Sasuke's in not to mention how Sasuke's pride has been damaged, just who trained Naruto, he doesn't even look tired either. Sakura looks at her crush in Naruto, nobody could do a thing to Sasuke in the academy but in 9 moves Naruto just destroyed him, she doesn't know what to feel about this. Mazaguchi looks at Naruto and smirks although he doesn't know him he admits the guy's tough not to mention he humiliated Sasuke was just icing on the cake. Kakashi finally stops overthinking everything, this fight is over the winner is Naruto. Naruto rolls his eyes, there was never any doubt unlike that joke of an Uchiha I back up my words, I'm out of here, I have better things to do, then waste my time here any longer. Naruto starts to walk away and Sasuke glares at him his body still hurts but he stands up on shaky legs before going through some hand signs Kaden, Gokaku no Jutsu fire release, great fireball technique. Sakura saw what Sasuke did she looks Naruto and shouts to warn him, Naruto turns around and shakes his head before once again vanishing before appearing behind Sasuke. Sasuke looks behind him in shock to see Naruto glaring at him before going through his slamming his hand on the ground Sweden, Swiro, water prison technique. Sasuke finds himself in the water prison technique but Naruto then does something else as his hand starts gaining electricity and he places his hands on the water prison causing Sasuke to scream in pain as he's shocked by lightning with the water making it worse. Kakashi looks at Naruto in shock. Not only can he use water techniques but also lightning he then looks at Sasuke he's not happy what Sasuke did but he's still his student. Naruto stop it now. Naruto scoffs. What a fucking joke he's not endured enough attacking me from behind like the coward he is. Kakashi continues to try to get Naruto to stop this he could attack Naruto but that would not go well for Konoha in the long run and not gain the trust of Naruto. After another minute Sasuke has collapsed under the pain Naruto removes the water prison and walks away but Sasuke's still getting shocked after another minute it's stopped, Naruto's already left as has Haku, she was disgusted by the Uchiha's actions and feels he got what he deserved. Kakashi approaches Sasuke and picks him up and carried him back to Tazuna's house, when Tsunami sees Sasuke's condition and asks what happened when Kakashi tells her she's shocked, but when Mazaguchi explains that Naruto did what he did because Sasuke attacked him after he lost. Tsunami shakes her head she knows that Naruto's dangerous but wouldn't attack someone like he did unless he was pissed off, she has seen the arrogance of Sasuke knows he got what he deserved not that she'd tell Kakashi that because Sasuke's his student. Kakashi takes Sasuke to his room before returning downstairs, he then takes Sakura and Mazaguchi with him to keep an eye on Tazuna. Meanwhile, Naruto's back at his house he scoffs, so this is what the Uchiha are capable of huh, such a sore loser, attacking me like a coward, I didn't need Sakura's warning I knew he'd try something still, Kakashi could have easily stopped him but yet he did nothing, Konoha's still full of shit, I can already tell that Sasuke is Kakashi's prize student, he'd probably let him get away with anything. Naruto's making himself some tea when he gets a knock on the door. Naruto wonders who it is he was so angry with Sasuke's actions that he didn't use his sensing ability now someone's at his door, he wonders who it could be, he reluctantly, made his way to the front door and opened it, he was surprised to see Haku there. She smiles when she sees Naruto, and Naruto just raises an eyebrow, Haku, although it's nice to see you, why are you here, you're working for Gato, so coming here isn't a good move. She just nods. I know, but I wanted to talk to you about that Uchiha brat. Naruto just sighs, what about that arsehole? Haku smiles, may I come in, there is nobody in the area besides nobody from Konoha has seen me yet. Naruto moves to the side and she steps past him, 
Naruto closes the door and is then surprised when he sees Haku pouring the tea. He just shrugs and lets her do it. A short time later she brings two cups of tea and they sit down. Naruto looks at her. You know you didn't have to do that. She just shrugs. It was the least I could do. Once they'd both let the tea cool down Haku turns to Naruto. So, I saw the quick fight with that Uchiha. The fight was over quickly. I didn't like his underhanded tactic though although he got what he deserved in the end. Naruto just snorts. All the stories I heard about the Uchiha are all the same a bunch of arrogant assholes, who seem to think they're better than the rest of the world, I heard about the Uchiha massacre and let me tell you the world's better off without losers like them. Haku seems confused, how did you hear about it? Naruto raises an eyebrow. I may hate the Uchiha clan's arrogance but they are well were once a famous clan everyone knows about the Uchiha clan's destruction, as for that brat Sasuke, well he's talented but it seems that either everyone else is weak inflating his ego, or the next generation in Konoha are just plain weak. Haku nods, the other two don't seem that impressive, from what I observed before you showed up the other boy doesn't like that Uchiha either as for the girl, well, she didn't do anything when their sensei was captured by Zabuza-sama, so my guess is a fangirl. Naruto nods agreeing with her yes the girl is pretty but she's not that talented other than having good chakra control, learning the tree climbing exercise first time is impressive, although Tabuki-chan, did say that women usually have less chakra but better control. I agree with you but her chakra control is better than her teammates, but that's all. Haku smiles. Yes it was impressive for her first time, unlike her teammates, it seemed that the Uchiha didn't like the fact she learned something he hasn't, kind of like he expects to learn everything before anyone else. Naruto's now finished his tea so looks at Haku, not that this little chat hasn't been enlightening but I have to warn you, I know you and Zabuza work for Gato, and I've been killing off his men, if you wasn't targeting Tazuna then we wouldn't have a problem, but you are so we do. Tazuna and his family have been good to me so I don't want anything bad to happen to them unfortunately I was too late for Kaiza, but no more, you attempt to kill him or his family then I'll kill you, the Konoha nins are fair game although I'd prefer the girl survives. Haku looks at Naruto in shock not expecting that, Naruto-san, I do not want to kill this Tazuna or his family, but I do what Zabuza-sama asks of me, I don't want to fight you either, but I will if I have to, please understand. Naruto looks at Haku like she's grown a second head, are you fucking serious, don't you have a mind of your own? Haku looks at Naruto, I am Zabuza-sama's tool, I do what he asks, I owe him everything. Naruto just scoffs, so be it then, I tried to be reasonable with you but you're blinded by your faith in Zabuza, we have nothing more to talk about so please leave, next we meet, I'll take your head, but mark my words Gato will betray you, think on that. Haku just nods and leaves the house. Naruto watches her and shakes his head, she sees herself as nothing but a tool, so be it, I will kill her and Zabuza if they become my enemies, the other problem is Konoha, they know who I am I doubt they'll drop it, I am a Jinchuriki, although I wish I wasn't, I could just leave again after this whole Gato bullshit, I did it once I can vanish again. It's been several days since Haku met Naruto since then she stayed away from him not that he cares he's also glad the team from Konoha haven't bothered him since Naruto humiliated that arrogant Uchiha. He has been kept in the loop though from Inari, he told Naruto that the Uchiha was quite hurt and even several days later isn't fully recovered, Inari also told him that the Uchiha's itching for payback, Naruto just scoffed when he heard that. Inari's just left Naruto's house he told Naruto that everyone's gone to the bridge and overheard that Zabuza should be fully healed by now so a confrontation is certain, at first Naruto just ignored it, he was training in front of his house when a thought comes to him and he looks in the direction of Tazuna's house. If I was Gato I'd have a backup plan in place in case Tazuna holds out and I if I was Gato I'd target his family and with all the Konoha Nin at the bridge Tsunami and Inari are defenseless, well unfortunately for Gato he's not accounted for me. Naruto quickly puts on his top and makes his way to Tazuna's on the way he sees claw-like marks on trees so he speeds up, 
he's there just in time as he hears Inari shouting at someone when he looks into the clearing he sees two men holding Tsunami, the way their manhandling Tsunami makes his blood boil. Naruto then steps out into the clearing and the two men stop, Naruto looks at them, if I was you I'd release Tsunami right now, and if you know what was good for you then you'd fall on your swords, but personally I'm hoping you attempt to fight me and I cut you down like the vermin you are. The two men arrogantly toss Tsunami to the floor of course before they can even move they both feel a sharp pain across their throats, both grab their throats and wrap their hands around two knives, sticking out of their throats. That's the last thing they do as they collapse on the ground, both in shock, that they were taken out so quickly, it must have been the person who's been causing Gato so much trouble. Naruto approaches them both ripping the knives from their throats he then turns away from them and sees Tsunami holding Inari, both had their hands covering their eyes, he creates two clones and orders them to take away the bodies, he then turns to Tsunami and Inari and approaches them. Naruto gets on one knee, it's okay, they're dead, I'm glad neither of you saw them die, killing is not a sight anyone should witness, the bodies have been removed, I'd advise you return to your home or if you don't feel safe go to my house or a friend's, I will go to the bridge and keep Tazuna safe. Inari looks up, keep grandpa safe Nisan. Naruto ruffles his hair then stands up and walks away, Tsunami and Inari see the blood on the ground but then quickly head off to a neighbor's. It doesn't take Naruto long to get to the bridge, what he sees when he gets there is Sakura stood in front of Tazuna, she seems okay but also worried. He then looks away from her and sees Zabuza and Kakashi battling against each others in a deadlock. He looks away from them and sees a surprising scene, to him it looks like a dome of mirrors, he can see inside though and sees the arrogant Uchiha looking like a porcupine just like the other one whose name isn't really important he's in the same state as the Uchiha but unlike the Uchiha he's unconscious. He then sees the Uchiha collapse and scoffs, to Naruto he's all talk, he then looks back at Sakura who's yet to notice him well nobody has, but it's quite obvious that with the two major threats out of the way Haku will turn her attention to Sakura and Tazuna. Naruto smirks, well, Haku I did warn you, what would happen it's time I shake things up. Naruto goes through some hand signs futon, datapa wind release, great breakthrough a massive force of wind rushes towards the ice mirrors, but Naruto's not finished as he goes through another set of hand signs Kaden, Kan Senpu Fire Release, Flame Whirlwind. The Flame Whirlwind joins with the Great Breakthrough and increases its power as it smashes into the ice mirrors, Haku saw it at the last second and got badly burned and cut up by the wind but was able to not get caught too badly. As this happened Zabuza and Kakashi had felt the force of the jutsus and saw the devastation, Zabuza saw his tool on the ground he could see Haku was pretty beat up. Kakashi was surprised he liked Zabuza look around and see Naruto standing there. Zabuza's never met Naruto before only what Haku's told him about the blonde, but this boy's ruined everything, he saw that Haku had beaten the two brats and only had the pink-haired girl to deal with, now that's all changed as Haku's also been taken out. Kakashi looks at Naruto. Just how powerful is he combing two jutsus from two different affinities that's impressive. Haku momentarily blacked out but has no come to and looks in the direction that Kakashi and Zabuza are looking and she sees Naruto, he came after all, damn that hurt. Other than the others Sakura and Tazuna have finally looked away from the destruction and they both see Naruto, Tazuna smiles, so Menma or is it Naruto has finally turned up, damn he's really grown stronger. Sakura smiles although she was trying to figure out what to think about seeing Sasuke like that, she also knew that Haku was going to turn her attention to her, but Naruto saved her, she saw the jutsu hit the mirrors and couldn't believe how powerful it was, not only did it destroy the ice mirrors but also took Haku out of the fight. She wonders why he got involved is it only to save Tazuna or was it to help her and her teammates she doubts it though as he's not really happy that Kona has here. With the fighting momentarily over Tazuna looks at Naruto, who nods, your family is fine, I arrived before Gato could get his hands on her and killed her kidnappers. Tazuna looks shocked, thank you, I didn't think Gato would try something like that but it's just like that midget. 
Naruto smirks at the comment, neither Inari or Tsunami-chan saw me kill them, I told them to visit a friend or go to my house while I came here, and not a moment too soon it seems. He looks at Zabuza, what's with the pajamas Zabuza, nice sword though are you compensating for something though? Sakura giggles, but Zabuza scoffs, cheeky little shit. Naruto rolls his eyes, seems like we're about to get some company the fat little midget as Tazuna calls him is about to waddle in with his little group of misfits. All of them look shocked until indeed they all hear clapping and Gato appears with about 50 of his men with him. Gato was even shocked seeing two unconscious Konoha nins but also Haku who almost broke his hand he was always planning on making that bitch pay he also sees the pink haired girl he smirks, quite an exotic look I can get a lot of money for her once I deal with the brats. Naruto looks at Gato he can see the way he looked at both Haku and then Sakura, the mere though angers Naruto, he steps forward and passes Sakura and the others before he stops by Haku, he looks down at her, can you stand? Haku nods and tries to stand but starts to fall down before Naruto catches her, he then creates a clone and passes Haku to the clone and it approaches the others, even Zabuza's surprised that Gato's even here. Naruto then turns to Gato with an evil smile, so you're the fat little midget Gato, huh? I'm the one who's been killing all your men, utterly weak really the may have feared you at first but at the end it was me they feared, me they begged to, and ultimately me who rid the world of such putrid sacks of excrement. He then looks around, 50 men, that must be all you have left, well, you probably thought you had the numbers game, well, I'm about to show you just how wrong you are. Naruto crosses his fingers and there's a large puff of smoke and once the smoke's gone now stands over 200 clones of Naruto. Naruto grins, didn't I tell you how wrong you are, I think hell is waiting for you Gato, Kaiza screams for your death not to mention everyone else who's been terrorized by you and your thugs. He turns to his clones, wipe them all out but Gato's mine. The clones all rush in not including the one keeping Haku in place. Zabuza, grins, that little shit may have a mouth on him but he's got quite the vulgar vocabulary, still, maybe what Naruto told Haku was true and Gato always planned on betraying me, quite a lot of clones there cage bunchins also that's a Jonin level clone jutsu also so this kid's got a lot of chakra. By this time Sasuke and Mazaguchi have regained consciousness and once Sasuke sees Naruto he clenches his fist in anger, although he is pretty shocked on how many clones he can make and that they're all solid also. Meanwhile, back with Naruto, as his clones rushed in Naruto slowly walked towards Gato, who once seeing Naruto started to back away, Naruto pulls out his katana, and starts to stalk his prey, any thug that approaches him is cut down without Naruto taking his eyes off Gato. Naruto's killed about five thugs before he pulls out two throwing knives and tosses them into Gato's knees causing him to scream out in pain and fall to his knees, once he looks up he sees Naruto almost on him. He looks around his 50 men are all dead they only managed to kill about five of Naruto's clones, he looks back at Naruto, wait, wait stop, I'll give you anything, money, women, you can be my right hand man, just let me live, please. Naruto stops in front of Gato, look at you, how pathetic, not so cocky anymore are you, besides I want nothing from you other than to see you die, like the worm you are, and to be tortured for all eternity in hell, where you belong. I take great joy in killing you not only can everyone you've killed rest in peace, but wave country will be free from your tyranny, Kaiza was a friend to me and you killed him to make an example, that was one of many mistakes you made, now you die. Before Gato can say anything Naruto's brought his katana down on Gato, with his head falling from his body and falling off the bridge, with that over with Naruto kicks the body off the edge and sheaths his katana, his clones have already dispelled once the thugs were dead. He takes one look at Zabuza and Haku and then the team from Konoha, scoffing at the look that Sasuke's giving him before he walks away into the trees. It's been a day since Gato and his army of thugs were eliminated, the people of Wave are still trying to come to terms that they're now free, some even refused to believe that Gato was even dead that was until they found Gato's body, and head only then did the believe, the body was burned and then the parties began. 
Team 7 participated in the party, some of the girls would giggle when they saw Sasuke, but whenever they tried to ask him to dance with them they refused so they didn't bother after that. Mazaguchi was also asked and of course accepted even Sakura was asked to dance, and even if she still had feelings for the brooding Uchiha she still accepted their requests. Lastly, Kakashi was asked to dance and he did it once or twice but some of the women didn't like him reading porn. There were actual parties every evening, since Gato died, during the day Tazuna and the bridge builders helped to finish the bridge, on the third evening there was another party, again the Uchiha was brooding, still angry that the damned Yukita or Uzumaki upstaged him, defeated that Haku so easily then killed all of Gato's thugs and Gato himself it pissed him off. While he was brooding Naruto himself arrived, several of the villagers had heard that Menma Yukita or to Team 7, and Tazuna and his family Naruto Uzumaki were happy to see him arrive. Like at the first party many of the girls offered to dance with Naruto, and it's not uncommon for girls to ask him to dance when he was in the land of iron he got asked often, so again he accepted their requests. Sakura seemed to be happier to see Naruto although she was not sure why, her inner self told her to ask Naruto to dance and at first she was unwilling to do that for one reason was that she was nervous, especially after she saw what Naruto did to Gato and his thugs and partly for nervous because of conflicting thoughts on Naruto since that incident with Inari that her inner self refuses to not bring up every chance she can get. After several hours she finally asked him to dance and he accepted, after dancing with Sakura, Naruto was then asked to dance by Tsunami, and he accepted that also. A few days after that party the bridge was finally finished and the farewell party happened, Naruto again arrived after more dancing Naruto was approached by Kakashi, Naruto knew that sooner or later he would ask Naruto about returning to Konoha with Team 7, something Naruto was reluctant to even consider. Naruto looks up, is there something I can help you with Hitaki-san? Kakashi gives Naruto an eye smile. Are you enjoying the party? Naruto just scoffs. You didn't come here to talk about whether I was enjoying the party or not so just get to the point of approaching me. Kakashi just sighs. Still not happy we are here, but fine, I would like you to return with us to Konoha. You are the Jinchuriki of Konoha, and running away was not a wise decision. Naruto glares at Kakashi. Fuck you Hitaki. I left because of the treatment received by that cesspool of a village, my status as a Jinchuriki means nothing, I am not a ninja so you can't call me a missing nin, I have no reason to return to Konoha, so save your breath. Kakashi shakes his head, it's not so simple as I said you are a Jinchuriki, you should fight for Konoha. Naruto again scoffs, bullshit, Hitaki, I hold no loyalty to Konoha, being a Jinchuriki is irrelevant, what Konoha wants is irrelevant, go ahead and send people after me I will kill them just I did those root anbu, you have no idea what I am capable of you only saw a glimpse of that beating that emo shit Uchiha Sasuke, and Gato. Kakashi rubs the bridge on his nose, Naruto, I know what the village did to you hurt you badly but be reasonable do you intend to kill anyone sent after you, why, just return to Konoha, things will be different. Naruto just chuckles. I doubt it Hitaki, the moment they see me I will endure the same treatment so no I will not return, this discussion is over, leave me alone. Kakashi looks at Naruto he's about to try again when Naruto walks away so he lowers his head and walks away, I am sorry sensei. The next morning and team 7 are all packed and heading back to Konoha, Naruto watches them from the trees, knowing deep down this isn't over, it's annoying after they have gone Tazuna noticed Naruto approached him. Naruto looks over, Tazuna, what can I do for you? Tazuna smiles, well Naruto or do you still want to be called Menma, I want to ask you something. Naruto nods, call me what you want, ask your question. Tazuna also nods, well firstly, I heard your talk with Kakashi, I have to say trying to force the issue of your return was unfair, do you think they will try something again? Naruto scoffs, you can count on it, I may have to leave again. Tazuna shakes his head, I understand, you do what you have to do, I also came over to ask about what I should call the bridge. 
Naruto raises an eyebrow, why ask me? Tazuna chuckles, well although you are not a citizen of Wave, many citizens see you as one, you saved us from Gato, yes Team 7 helped but you dealt a blow to Gato and his thugs. Naruto just nods, I see, you want my opinion go ahead then. Tazuna looks at the retreating forms Team 7 inches well I don't want to call it something, dull, and I'm not calling it anything to do with that little emo Uchiha brat, I was thinking of the great Naruto bridge, but nobody but my family and Team 7 know you as Naruto, but it might gain you unwanted attention. Naruto nods, I agree with both the decision about the Uchiha and yes it's wise not to call it the great Naruto bridge or the great Menma bridge, if you want my opinion the great wave bridge sounds the best or you could just call it the great Tazuna bridge. Tazuna chuckles, the great Tazuna bridge huh, Tsunami would not let it get to my head, the great wave bridge is good, I will go with that. Naruto smiles, good, we don't need your ego to get as bad as the emos. Tazuna scoffs, that boy's ego is a joke, his sensei does nothing to curb his arrogance either. Naruto nods, yes, it's a joke, well I will be off, what are your plans now Tazuna? Tazuna shrugs, I have no idea, this was a big project, so resting for a while. Naruto smiles, you sure you are not just tired old man? Tazuna scoffs, cheeky little brat. When he looks up Naruto has vanished, how does he keep doing that? Several days later Team 7 arrived back in Konoha, and Kakashi gave his report, suffice to say Hiruzen isn't best pleased with Kakashi's actions he looks at the Uchiha and frowns when the reports were over he notices that all of Team 7 seem to be looking at Kakashi with confusion. Hiruzen then smiles. Well congratulations, on completing your first C rank mission because of the changes, I will upgrade it to an A rank mission, for now, you have a week off to recuperate. They all nod and Kakashi turns to them, dismissed, we will meet up in a week feel free to do what you want in the time given. They all nod again before leaving, once they're gone Hiruzen turns to Kakashi, I'm guessing you left out something seeing as your team was confused so what did you miss out? Kakashi sighs and then informs him of Naruto, suffice it to say Hiruzen was shocked but also happy and angry when he heard about the root constantly attacking him. Hiruzen clasps his hands together, so Naruto or Menma is quite capable if he was able to take out the Uchiha quite easily, but you don't know what he's capable of. Kakashi shakes his head, no Lord Hokage, Naruto or Menma, was not happy seeing us arrive, nor was the client's grandson who sees Naruto or Menma as an older brother figure, also he's very skilled he left wave after the incident with the mother figure or auntie figure dying. Hiruzen ponders on this who could this woman be who became close to Naruto, how skilled would you say he is as you already mentioned he took out the Uchiha easily. Kakashi ponders on that, unfortunately Lord Hokage, I have not talked to Naruto that much although I have tried to talk to him, other than what I saw from his short spar with Sasuke, and what I saw when he and his clone slaughtered Gato and his men. Hiruzen nods, you said he left wave, did Naruto or the family you guarded mention where he went? Kakashi shakes his head, no, as I mentioned Naruto avoided us for the most part, I only had one conversation with him and that was right before we left, that conversation didn't end well, the family never said anything either they were not going to tell us certainly the grandson Inari was never going to tell us, or they didn't know, Naruto was an enigma. Hiruzen sighs, I see, and you said the people of Wave knew him as Menma Yukita. When Kakashi nods Hiruzen groans, I see, well that is all, but I'd advise you to remind Sasuke that you are the Jonin, you are the one who makes the decision not him, your job is to teach your team not stroke the Uchiha's ego. Kakashi nods before leaving the room, Hiruzen stands up and looks out of the window with his hands clasped behind his back, I am glad you are alive Naruto-kun, I am curious as to how skilled you are, as, for you Danzo, it seems you knew about Naruto and your tactics are disgusting sending your root, to kidnap people, you may be the reason Naruto-kun never returns, but he needs to come back. He then hears his name being called, yes what is it Nako? 
one of Hirazan's Anbu appears she's wearing the standard Anbu attire with long purple hair going down her back. I am glad that Naruto-kun is alive, as you know I was one of his protectors before he left, I may be able to talk to him, at least from our past interactions he may listen to me, from what Kakashi Senpei, said he tried to force the issue, that was the wrong approach. Hirazan nods his head, I agree with Root attacking Naruto-kun constantly trying to force the issue was not the best way to go about it, I authorize you to talk to Naruto-kun, try and reason with him, although I want him to be happy the fact does remain he is Konoha's Jinchuriki. Nako behind her mask scoffs, that means nothing to Naruto-kun, he said it himself, Naruto-kun seems to be happy right now, coming back to a village that hated him once and I think will do again once he returns, would not be something he wants to happen again. Here is in size, I am aware Nako, do your best to convince him that is all I ask, as much as I want him to return I don't want to make things worse. Yugao aka Nako nods, understood, as much as I don't want to say it what if things get ugly. Hirazan looks at her, try not to make it worse as Kakashi did, if things escalate that way use your best judgment, the people of Waves see Naruto or Menma as a hero, if they see a fight it will make things worse, fighting him will be the last resort, he is not a registered shinobi for Konoha regardless of him being trained as one, he is still a citizen of Konoha, but his status as Jinchuriki trumps that as much as I hate to admit. Yugao nods, understood Hokage-sama, I will leave immediately. Hirazan shakes his head, leave it until tomorrow haven't you got a date with Hayate-san tonight. Yugao blushes in embarrassment for forgetting. I kind of forgot Hokage-sama. Hirazan chuckles dismissed. Meanwhile, while the discussion was happening in the Hokage's office Sakura after returning home and hugging her parents, and telling them about the mission she then leaves the house, as she's walking she hears her name forehead, well the nickname her arch nemesis who she calls Eno Pig. She looks over her shoulder and sees Eno run up to her Sakura waits until she's beside her before walking, neither says anything at first and visits a coffee shop, once they've gotten their drinks they sit down and immediately Ino asks her about the mission, Sakura tells her everything. Ino sits there shocked, this Naruto guy beat Sasuke-kun that easily. Sakura just takes a sip of her coffee, yay, it surprised me also as much as anyone I still am shocked by it, but it happened. Ino just nods, he attacked him afterward why would Sasuke-kun do that? Sakura shrugs, he did but I think Naruto-kun, knew even before I warned him, Naruto-kun just seems to be more skilled than Sasuke-kun, he's got training from someone, he left Wave when he was 7, and only returned a week before we arrived, he's also killed before and didn't seem affected either, he killed Gato and his thugs with ease not that Gato was strong he was a midget. Ino takes this all in, did this Naruto live here before he left, when Sakura nods Ino continues, why would he leave didn't he have any family here? Sakura shrugs, I have no idea, but he's talented, maybe he will come back someday. Ino smirks, is that because you want to see his body again, you also danced with him and not Sasuke-kun. Sakura blushes, shut up Ino pig, and I asked Sasuke-kun to a dance, he refused, he refused everyone who asked. Naruto-kun danced with quite a lot of people. Ino grins, I guess I missed my chance but if he does come here I'll get my dance from him, I also hope to see that body of his. Sakura blushes, pervert. Ino shrugs, what can I say, I like checking out sexy men, plus I can't have you see something I haven't unlike you though I will go further. Sakura looks shocked before shaking her head then smirks, well do what you want I'll just take Sasuke-kun then. Ino scoffs then smirks, then I'll just take them both, I'll let you have Kiba. Sakura gags, as if Ino pig, maybe I'll take them both leaving Kiba for you. Ino also gags, keep dreaming forehead, as if I'd ever settle for dog breath. A day later Yugao aka Nako left Konoha in the early hours of the morning, Yugao was also happy to hear about Naruto being alive, 
Although the other Anbu on the protection detail did their job Yugao took it more seriously when she heard he just suddenly vanished without a trace she was sent to look for him but came up with nothing as did everyone else, so to find out he's alive and well is good news to her. Also, the fact that Naruto wiped the floor with that arrogant Uchiha was nice to know, he has a sword and wonders how good he is. It takes her just over a day to get to Wave Country, she has been there many years ago so wonders how much damage this Gato did. She continues it would be nice to see how Naruto is. Meanwhile, in Wave, Naruto's just visited Tazuna's house to have breakfast with them, it's been a few days since Team 7 left and Naruto knows sooner or later someone from Konoha will come knocking. He may have been pissed with Kakashi but what he said is true he in the village's Jinchuriki but it just pisses him off to go back there by force. Naruto is walking through the village he's happy that Wave is returning to its former glory then it's a good thing, but leaving Wave is something he doesn't want to do but he may have to. Several hours later Yugao arrives she looks disgusted but is happy, that it seems to be improving, at first she wonders what to do, to ask about Naruto or Menma or look herself, from reports Naruto lives on the outskirts of Wave, in the forest so she decides to start there. Naruto is outside cutting some wood when he senses someone heading towards his house, he enters his house and grabs his katana, and pulling on his top he grunts as he's covered in sweat meaning it will be annoying if there is a fight. He quickly summons several clones and orders them to stay in the trees ready. Naruto after arriving outside then thinks, why is there only one person, also this chakra signature seems familiar, I will find out in a few minutes. Naruto waits and he doesn't have to wait long as Yugao enters the clearing, Naruto raises an eyebrow, but this person is familiar to him he smirks, it's been a long time Nako. Yugao smiles, that it has Naruto-kun, it seems you have grown quite a bit since I saw you last. Naruto smirks, well, you generally do grow when you age Nako. Yugao chuckles, that is true, I heard the report Kakashi Senpei gave, you took out Gato and his thugs. Naruto rolls his eyes, I see he seemed to forget I also took out the fake hunter Ninhaku, but then he probably didn't want his golden boy Sasuke Uchiha to lose face. Yugao nods, he did state that Sasuke took out the hunter Nin after Mazaguchi was taken out. Naruto scoffs, the Uchiha was taken out also how typical. Yugao frowns, it seems Kakashi is trying to lie but why? I am sure you did more than was stated in the report. Naruto nods, yes, I killed several of Gato's men before the last battle, Gato deserved to die for what he did here, this land was peaceful other than when those Anbu, turned up. Yugao ponders that, I believe they were not the normal Anbu, Naruto-kun, I believe they were a separate unit led by one of the village elders named Danzo Shimura, although it was supposed to have been disbanded by the fourth Hokage. Naruto raises an eyebrow, I find it hard to believe the Hokage would not know about this. Yugao thinks on that, as much as I hate to admit it I think he knows but allows it. Naruto scoffs, how typical, but this is not why you are here is it but I have a good idea as to why you are here so just tell me. Yugao knows that now is the moment of truth, yes, Naruto-kun, as much as I want to know what you have been up to I have been asked by Hokage-sama to ask you to return to Konoha. Naruto shakes his head, I believe I told Kakashi what my answer was it hasn't changed regardless of it being someone I once knew, that tactic won't work. Yugao knows it won't be that easy, I am aware, but what Kakashi Senpei said was true you are the Jinchuriki and you left Konoha, I know why you left, but as much as I hate it, you are the Jinchuriki, and it means you can't always get what you want. Naruto glares at her, you may have looked after me Nako but fuck you, I am in charge of my own life, I am no slave to that cesspool called Konoha, I will not be forced to return there. Yugao sighs, I am sorry Naruto-kun, I did not mean to offend you and I agree with you but you can't change it you are what you are you are Konoha's Jinchuriki. Naruto scoffs, you keep saying that but I don't care, I have told you my stance you have stated yours there is nothing more to discuss, now is there. Yugao doesn't want to fight him but there is no choice. 
She goes to reach for her katana. Naruto watches her and sighs before pulling his katana out. Naruto gets into a stance as does Yugao. I am curious to see how strong you are Nako. I do not want to kill you and before you try to underestimate me, I have killed several people, I have led people in battle, and have fought against Anbu level shinobi before. Yugao looks shocked. What have you been up to since leaving here when you were seven? I understand Naruto-kun. After hearing about your skills I was wondering how skilled you were. Now I would like to test you, but I will not underestimate you, I am not as arrogant as some people, I will see what you are capable of through your actions, but don't get too arrogant, do not underestimate me either. Naruto nods, no more words are needed. Naruto and Yugao charge at each other and their swords clash, at first they have a test of strength with neither gaining the advantage, they then break off and a kenjutsu battle happens. For the next few minutes, both try to gain an advantage, surprisingly for Yugao she expected to have the advantage through experience but that wasn't the case, twice Yugao thought she got within Naruto's guard only to fail to get an attack in, Naruto also got one chance but also failed to land a hit. Yugao tried to use a jutsu but it failed. Naruto retaliated but she cancelled his attack out and they were surprisingly in a stalemate much to her shock, even though she was also proud. Both of them circled each other but before they were about to clash they heard someone telling them to stop, Naruto knew it was Tsunami he doesn't drop his guard but backed up, Yugao does the same. Tsunami looks at them both at first she arrived and saw the fight and it was amazing, Naruto-kun, please don't fight. Naruto looks at Tsunami, it's not that easy Tsunami-chan, I know what Nako said is true, as much as I hate to admit it but I refuse to go back there, I will be treated the same as I once was. Yugao knows that would probably be true but doesn't know what to do. Tsunami knows that this could happen since her father told her, what about getting some stipulations before your return? Naruto and Yugao look at each other before Yugao then gets an idea, there may be a way but it all depends on if he will listen. Naruto looks at Yugao, what do you mean and who do you mean? Yugao looks at both Naruto and Tsunami, the fire daimyo, we would need to get an audience with him but it will be tough as what I said about you being the Jinchuriki, but there is only one way to find out. Naruto sighs, I'd much rather not return but this may be the only way. Tsunami doesn't like it, we will miss you all Naruto-kun, but it's out of your hands. Naruto nods and Tsunami walks off. Yugao looks at Naruto. I am sorry Naruto-kun, I want you to be happy we can try and get an advantage to all this, and you're right I fear the moment they see you the village will continue to hate you. Naruto scoffs. Unlike last time I have affection for Konoha, I only had very few people I was close to, I also don't care about the acknowledgement. Yugao nods knowing what he says is true, you should say your goodbyes, it's probably best to get this over and done with. Naruto shakes his head, stay here I will say goodbye to Tazuna and Inari he will take it hard again. Yugao nods as Naruto creates several clones, prepare to leave but you may as well prepare some tea first and lunch. Several hours later after a heartfelt goodbye to Inari, promising to return again at some point. They both leave at a fast pace, it takes half of the day to arrive at the capital, once they arrive Yugao asks the guards for an important interview with the daimyo. At first, neither Yugao nor Naruto thought anything was happening, but when the daimyo was notified who was there he was confused but after some preparations allowed them to enter. Once they arrived they both bowed to the daimyo, the daimyo immediately noticed something strange, may I ask young man why you don't have a headband of Konoha? Naruto knows to be respectable especially to a daimyo so he bows, Lord daimyo the reason is that I am not a Konoha nin. The daimyo raises an eyebrow, I have heard of your name you are the Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails correct? Naruto nods his head, that is true Lord daimyo, but I left Konoha many years ago when I was five. The daimyo looks shocked, are you telling me that Konoha's Jinchuriki left Konoha years ago and this is the first I'm hearing of it? Both Naruto and Yugao look shocked by this more Yugao than Naruto. Yugao decides to answer, Lord Daimyo, 
I'm sure the Hokage informed you when it happened. When the daimyo tells her he was not she doesn't know how to answer. Naruto has been thinking since he heard what the daimyo said and looks at Yugao, Neko, is it possible, he didn't inform the daimyo out of shame or that someone intercepted the message. The daimyo seems puzzled, who would dare intercept a message to me? Naruto smirks, only one man I can think of the same man who sent his own army to capture me one Danzo Shimura. Both the daimyo and Yugao look at Naruto in surprise, Yugao is considering it the daimyo seems confused, why would one of the village elders do this, and why to send them after Naruto? Naruto answers this, even when I was young I know that Danzo had designs for me I don't know what designs there were but he sent these Anbu without consent from the Hokage. Yugao then replies, he did seem shocked and angered when Kakashi Senpei informed him. The daimyo still surprised by this asks what he's been wondering, so what is it I can do for you, Naruto Uzumaki? Naruto looks at Yugao before turning back to the daimyo, a few days ago, Team 7 returned to Konoha they were on a mission in the land of waves where I uncounted them Kakashi Hataki wanted me to return to Konoha I refused but now Neko has been sent to try and get me to reconsider. He looks at Yugao again, Neko looked after me when I was younger, I know that as soon as I return to Konoha the village will treat me like they used to I have come to you to try and get some stipulations sorted out only then will I return to Konoha. The daimyo rubs his chin. Tell me Naruto, you look similar to someone and have the surname of someone I owe my life to do you know who your parents are? Yugao looks at Naruto wanting to know also Naruto smirks as he ponders about what to say. He once again bows, I do know who my parents are Lord Daimyo, my mother is Kashina Uzumaki my father was Minato Namikaze the Yandaimi Hokage. Yugao looks shocked, he is sensei's son. As for the son of the fourth how did I not notice? The daimyo doesn't look to please, I was told that their son died and that Naruto was an orphan who was given the name Uzumaki to respect the Uzumaki clan. Again Yugao looks surprised, Uzumaki clan, I wasn't aware there was an Uzumaki clan. Naruto again answers, I can imagine that was done to deceive you lord daimyo, especially how I was treated by the village before I left. The daimyo nods, Jinchuriki are not treated well so I've heard, you don't seem surprised about knowing about the Uzumaki clan. Naruto grins, no I wasn't surprised because I have already been to Uzushiogakur, several years ago I found all the secrets left by my clan before it was destroyed. Yugao looks at Naruto, I heard that Master Jiria, went there and found nothing. Naruto scoffs. He's not an Uzumaki so it's not surprising. The daimyo shakes his head, what are these stipulations Naruto? Naruto thinks for a minute before looking up, I have several stipulations Lord Daimyo. The daimyo nods, go on. Naruto grins, when I was in Konoha I was treated harshly as I was a civilian I wasn't strong enough to do anything that was then this is now stipulation 1 I will defend myself against anyone who attacks me and kill them if necessary if I am attacked, I don't want to be in Konoha honestly, but there are situations that force me to be there. The daimyo ponders on this the fact Konoha has constantly lied to him infuriates him and although he wouldn't want Naruto to kill he's a ninja and the villagers need to know he's defending himself, I will allow it but do not kill them for no reason. Naruto nods, understood, stipulation 2, I want to be allowed to leave Konoha if I don't want to stay regardless of me being a Jinchuriki, my mother is alive if she comes for me or I find where she is I will go to her. Both the daimyo and Yugao are shocked the daimyo then speaks, are you sure she's alive do you have any proof? Naruto nods before pulling out a scroll and opening it and they see it is a family tree, when Naruto shows the daimyo, and once he points out her name is still in red compared to many many in black he looks surprised, I will allow this, I am not happy with Konoha lying to me, so stipulation 2 agreed. Naruto seems happy about it Yugao is still in shock, Sensei could be alive but if Naruto can leave what's the point in him rejoining Konoha, but does Kashina Sensei know Naruto comes alive? Naruto nods inwardly happy he was kind of surprised he agreed to stipulation too. 
Stipulation 3 Lord Daimyo is I will be given my inheritance, no questions asked failure to do so will be met with severe consequences. The Daimyo chuckles, accepted, but were there any stipulations to finding out, I'm sure Minato would have done something. Yugao answers as she knows, yes there was Lord Daimyo, there were two the first was when Naruto turned 16, and the other was when he turns Chunin. Naruto scoffs, knowing how I was treated I was never going to be promoted. The daimyo looks disgusted, are you saying Naruto would never be promoted because of their hatred? Yugao nods, this is what I believe Lord Daimyo. The daimyo sighs, disappointing, I allow stipulation 3 then as I already did, he gets it now, what is stipulation 4 inches? Naruto grins, I answer only to you Lord Daimyo, not the Hokage, Council, or anyone else. The Daimyo chuckles, I don't think any of these would be accepted by Konoha, very deceiving Naruto-san, I agree stipulation 4 agree anything else. Naruto smiles, because of my harsh treatment before I left then this is stipulation 5, I will be treated with respect so no overcharging me, giving me rotten food, no refusing to sell to me again failure to do so will result in severe consequences and major fines, or worst case scenario imprisonment. The daimyo nods, easy decision that accepted. Naruto nods, I thank you lord daimyo. The daimyo smiles, that's fine I hope you find your mother. Naruto smiles, if I find her I will let her know you asked about her. Naruto then turns and walks away with Yugao following, once they leave the palace Yugao turns to Naruto, Konoha won't be happy about any of this. Naruto looks at her, do I care Nako, I told you I didn't want to be in Konoha. Yugao nods, in some ways, Konoha may deserve this, I hope you stay a while though I would like to know more about what you have done since leaving Konoha, I'm surprised Sensei may be alive, and why she would leave Konoha knowing you were there. Naruto nods, I thought that also, there will be a reason, I'm sure of it. Yugao just nods thinking the same thing could Danzo be involved again.